devious left. That's what it's supposed to be, baby. It's supposed to sound devious. Maniacal laughter. So the reason why I'm really sick uh, uh, about the dude that you're playing this week is that he picked up Daniel Jones, and I'm really hot about that, actually. You wanted Daniel Jones? I Listen, I know as crazy as it sounds, but Justin Herbert has not been it this year for me. I mean, he was well, early I'm, on, and then he's been busted it. lately. It's not him. It's his team. Well, yeah, his receivers are injured, and I think he's still dealing with that ridge stuff. So it's just like, did uh, you see that video I sent like uh, last week about um, it was like plays from the game with the Chargers? Mm-hmm. Justin was throwing the ball perfect, and his receivers just wasn't catching him because he's got like third and fourth string out there. Yeah, he got DeAndre Carter and Josh Palmer as his starting two receivers. Like that is, you were in hell. He threw the ball, put the ball directly in Palmer's hands like four different times, and he dropped it every time. I think so. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop throwing the ball so hard. He said, all right, let me throw it lightly. Okay, see, come on, bro. You got to put a little more heat on that one. Man, look, he <laughs> threw a floater, so, like, I, my arms, I just, I couldn't, I missed it. Because it's like, if you would have put a little bit more on it, I would have been straight, probably. Perhaps. Know, I'm going to catch him when it matters, though. Don't worry about it. Yeah. They ended up winning. But, yeah, now I'm sick because old boy uh, – first of all, old boy is a decent team. Like, he's a, a pretty good team, except Najee Harris has been underperforming all season. Uh, He doesn't really have a running back, too, because Khalil Herbert has been kicking up occasionally, but the Bears don't know what they want to do. And Damn. Elijah Mitchell got injured, and then they traded for McCaffrey. So he was just cooked in terms of backs. And yeah, St. Brown went James down. Connor, but he was injured. So yeah, St. Brown went down, Debo went down, like his <laughs> it was just good. And DJ Hawkinson hasn't been doing too much of anything minus that one that game where one he went nuts. Game. I'm imagine he's gonna do better now that he's yeah, last week he put nah, up he 21. Definitely yeah. yeah, he definitely will. Nine catches 70 yards, he'll definitely do better uh, on Minnesota because that's the, that's the type of player we need in here. Go on. I'm happy for y'all. Y'all need something. But I think you should be this week, and like if I'm looking at the matchup, like it's QB straight. You got two. Oh, you got Tyreek. I mean, come on. You got Ty Lockett. I'm, I'm yeah. You got Kamara at Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. I can see this getting it done. I could see this getting it done. I'm just Damn, I'm always look weary. at them cues on your team though, bro. Golly. Oh yeah, yeah. Using them, them IRs. I forgot Zeke was even, he's been injured for three weeks. Yeah. He was in there. <laughs> Bump injured, that nigga just been mid. Yeah, except for the last two games, he finally started to cook up and then got injured. And then had a bye week, and he may come back this week, but I don't know. At this know. point, let Tony Pollard rock, bro. I'm sorry, like, find somewhere for this nigga. Like, I mean, it's going to be impossible for you to do that, but. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Episode 72. We back in business, baby. We back here. We back this in. A very special episode. What's so special about it? Tell them what's so special about it, yeah? It's an early pop. For mm. one. For mm-hmm. one. Because I ain't work today. Uh, mm. For two, I'm sober. I'm usually smacked when we do these. Mm-hmm. I don't even understand. You getting gripping analysis today, yeah? Analysis gripping you. Well, I'm about to start drinking. I'll be smacked by the end of it. <laughs> well, then. I'm not a degenerate, so I didn't start drinking at 10 a.m. So, because I'm sober, obviously, since it's an early pod. Understandable. Thank you for understanding. But, yeah. Yeah, man, so. What's going on, man? How we feeling, man? Oh, uh, man, you know, we feeling great. You know, uh, definitely depressed as usual life is terrible but life is amazing it's a glorious thing because god of war just came out sure he did sure did i gotta so. say just off the uh hour and a half that i've been playing and it's it's looking game of the year ish it's the one it's the one elder ring is the two i'm not gonna hold you i'm still gonna put elder ring above this Strictly off a of strength sense that uh, I'm not going to play this that much. And I know that might, uh, you know, bother some people. And uh, I don't really care. It bothers me, the co-host. Yeah. Honestly, I preferred God of War before the remix. 
when like it was kind of like top down, you were kind of zoomed down, and Kratos was smaller, bigger arenas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was more into like getting a new weapon, do this and do that. Now it just feels a little um, and this is gonna be a wild, disrespectful comparison. So I want to apologize in advance. Oh, man, but you're gonna piss me off. <laughs> you gotta find a better comparison. <laughs> Um, but it, it reminds Find me of a like, better comparison before you say this. <laughs> yeah, come on, let me rock. Let me rock, yeah. It reminds me of like uh, a triple A Godfall. <laughs> See, that comparison is fair, but what pisses me off is that you're saying it's a triple A Godfall. Godfall is a port is a Godfall is God of War, and then Godfall was made to be like God of War. So you can't say God of War Ragnarok is a triple-A Godfall. I mean... Because Godfall I is can. a PS5 God of War 2018, because they based Godfall around the original God of War 2018 on PS4. Right, so I'm right. Just No, backwards. no, no. You put... You back... Exactly. That's what's disrespectful. You don't put God of War no, I knew it was disrespectful. Godfall. It's still correct, though. Like, it's correct, but you said it wrong. This is a much better Godfall, but um, I don't know. I mean, even I mean, mind you, I ain't gonna hold you. Like Godfall was just it didn't have any content. Like yeah. with this, yeah. um, it has a lot more content, the story, and all of that. It's just I don't know. It just kind of felt like I don't know. I just I I think, like... maybe I don't. I don't. Maybe I don't care. I don't know. I don't know. I just I can't even. It's hard for me to even figure out why I don't care. He's just broken, so that could be it, man. Could be it, but I just don't care. I didn't care when the 2018 one came out. I played it for a little while, and then I was just like, "Yeah, I don't. I'm all right." To be honest, like I was like, "I'm all right. I think I'm good off of this." You probably just don't care for the gameplay, but you didn't get enough into the story to start caring because the story is really what was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The story would probably would be what grips you. Um, uh, but for me, a lot of the uh. I don't know. I just feel like, and again, I can't even, this isn't even a critique of this game because I didn't play it um, or really the other one. But a lot of these single player games, it's just the story is just like loosely there. It's just like just barely enough of a coherent plot line to keep you engaged. Oh, yeah, so I it's think, definitely not God of War. Yeah, no. It's going to be crazy. But it's been that for so long that I feel like now I'm just like, all right, it doesn't even matter. Like, what, what else are you doing? Like I was to the point to where now that's I don't know. That was in what was that Outriders game? That's yeah, well, Outriders is the perfect example of that. Like just for, shoestring story, it doesn't matter. We just here to shoot shit. Yeah, it's just listen, brother. Like what, this this is the, the Cheeto that's locking the door. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's just barely enough of a story here. But you just wait, hold on, Nate. Oh, this ain't even really a story at all. Damn. Y'all got me. Y'all got me, okay. Got See, me. But like God Award, the it's just a perfect game for me because I like the story. The story is definitely there, but I also like the gameplay. If like if you really think about it, if you remember what you played from God of War, it's mm. like like dark. It's not like it's like light Dark Souls. There's a parry system. There's dodges. You have to time your dodges. You can't just. It's not a hack and slash where you can just wildly swing around. Yeah, like you had to do two or three hits, back mm. off. You had to time the dodges right. There's boss fights where you fight these giant grotesque monsters like Dark Souls, and you have to mm-hmm. dodge their swings. It's so like if you compare the gameplay to that, then I mean it's it's doing what it need to. And yeah, plus, and, graphics are just and, amazing. And we do have to remember, I played this in 2018 when it came out, and at 2018 I hadn't played Dark Souls in none of them type of games. So. Yeah. I was well. I had played Bloodborne. Let me just make that clear. But I, I had hated the, the yeah, ever living much. shit out of it. Um, yeah, so yeah. I was just like, no. Like, and it wasn't even like, well, this game is bad. No, it's just if you're gonna make a game this difficult, it just got to a point where I was just like, well, well, what do I do with this? How do I? How do I tell you this game is anything decent? How, how can I? I can't tell you it's bad because I can't play it. But how can I tell you it's good? How, what can I say? I'm just getting my ass whooped in a graveyard by fucking four dogs. And I get past them, and it's 92 niggas in the street just chilling. What are they here for? And why do I have to fight them? It turns out I didn't have to fight them, but that's not what I knew at the time. <laughs> and so I think that's probably what it was. I probably would go back, play the, the 2018 God Award, and I'd probably enjoy it a lot. Um, but I think at the time, it was a departure from the older God Awards that I liked. I liked all of them. 
I played all yeah. of them too. I got a war, got a war two, got a war three. I played them all. So like, I played Ascension, Chains of Olympus, the one on fucking PS, uh, PSP. PSP. Oh, this nigga was sick. He, he was buying, game. he was buying shit to play it. They said, "Oh wait, what? They dropping one on on ra- on the Raspberry Pi? Yeah, on I need that." <laughs> Did one of them had multiplayer too, which was crazy. What is multiplayer God of War look like? Is it co-op? No, it's literally like multiplayer, like against each other. What does that mean? Yeah. It was either it was either look it up. It was either God of War, Chains of Olympus, or Ascension. Um, I'm I'm looking it up now to see which one it was. It was Ascension, yeah. God it of was War Ascension, yeah. Look at a trailer and what it's like. What the fuck is this? Let me see. Is it like a okay? You configure your little champion, got skill points and all of that. Uh, you got oh, oh, that looks kind of crap. I'm sad that you missed out on this. You, I'm pretty sure you would have enjoyed it. Oh, nah, this looks kind of fire. Hold up. Yeah. Oh, he got him out of here. Yo, <laughs> he got smoked. Oh, my God. Nah, this is kind of hard. You picked a crazy God Award to not play out of all of them. <laughs> you picked the one with multiplayer and didn't play it. Yeah, this is kind of hard. God Award Ascension. I do not remember this game, boy. I'm yeah. sad that they didn't keep multiplayer, but I get it. They went in a whole new direction with the series, so. I mean, bringing it back now, though, with that type of bag, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that would do it. Because, like, if you bring that back now with, like, and not even necessarily the arena-type bag, and, like, you can kind of shorten it and make it more so like the, like you said, like the Dark Souls-type beat. And you can do one-on-ones, do 2v2s. Yeah, that would be nuts. And, you know, I've said this, but I don't think I ever said this on the pod. PlayStation has a lack of, how do I say this? They obviously don't have a lack of exclusives because PlayStation is known for having, like, the best exclusives. I mean, like, God of War. But they have a lack of multiplayer exclusives. Like, remember PS3? Remember Killzone? Uh, We just had God of War Resistance. Was that PS3? Yeah, it was PS3. Resistance 1, 2, and 3, um, they all have multiplayer, I'm pretty sure. And uh, like I said, Killzone, we just talked about God of War Ascension. PlayStation used to have some fucking bangers when it comes to multiplayer. Now, we don't got nothing. We just got the same shit everybody else got. We got Battlefield, Call of Duty. We don't have no exclusive multiplayer games. PlayStation need to get on that. I'm going to be real with you. I... Personally, and this is my opinion, I hate the idea of exclusive video games. Cut it the fuck out. It's over with. Oh, yeah. For sure, yeah. It's over with. I, I don't think, like, like, like the fact that Fable, I can't, like, that's really what pissed me off. I was like, I can't play this Fable. This still mad about Fable. Nigga, I loved Fable. Fable 1 was crack. Fable 2 was, uh, took a little step back, but it was still good. Fable 2 um, was crack. Fable 3? I don't even remember Fable 3. I ain't even gonna hold you. That was 360. I don't think at the time I did have a 360 at the time, but did I play Fable 3? I played the shit out of Fable 3. I think so. Let me see what Fable 2 looked like. Fable 2 might have been. I definitely played Fable 2. I must have played Fable 3. I just don't remember it. But yeah, nah. So it's like those are the type of games where I'm just like, bro, I, it's just there should be no exclusives. I, I just honestly, I don't I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what y'all say. Y'all want more money, right? Then release it to everyone. The fuck are you talking about? Stop saving exclusives for your shitty game, especially when everything's crossplay. Everything is available on on Steam or on some Game Pass that can be played on a computer. That can be nigga. I want every game. Period. I want them all. Well, uh, if you want every game, you want nope. to buy the system. Tuh. Watch what I do. They, you said they wanted more money. How you get more money from selling games or selling consoles? Watch what I do. What you what you gonna do? I'm finna look away. That's it. That's it. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, so I probably, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get a new one shot for sure, for sure, because I, I know that. Uh, I think at the time I just with the the difference between the old God Awards and then that one, and then me not being ready for that. I just think I wasn't really interested in that right at that moment. I just wasn't yeah. ready for that at the time. But now that you played Elden Ring, you got a feel for how to play Soulsborne. Yeah, yeah. Now that I played Game of the Year, like it should be so much easier for me to play um, uh, this game. Exactly. See, now you, yeah. Yeah, nah, man. 
Um, but do we got any other video game news? Any other games came out or something? Uh, Call of Duty is still Call of Duty in it up. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, I think that was it. We had Call of Duty Resident Evil. I'm damn sure not playing nothing else. Oh, yeah. Resident Evil. Yeah. So Resident Evil had... Man, listen. We already talked about it last week. What more yeah. can we say? It's still the same game. I'm screaming. I see an article on one of these websites. We need to start holding Japanese RPGs to higher standards. And I was like, good luck with that. <laughs> Those Japanese niggas are... are uh, look, let me, let me watch out what I say, but... <laughs> Them Japanese niggas don't give a fuck. <laughs> they are not interested. In... They're like, listen, bro, you're about to get Tales of Insert Title for the 97th time, buddy. You're about to get Octopath Traveler 19. <laughs> like, bro, I remember my boy used to be like, yo, Tales of Symphonia. And I used to be like, Tales of Symphonia. Wasn't there another game? And I remember looking it up one day, and there was like a trillion <laughs> Tales of something games. And I was we just get like... that with Monster Hunter. We looked up Monster Hunter and like, 300 million monster hunters came up. <laughs> it's like Tales of Symphonia. Tales of Vesperia. Tales of the Abyss. Tales of the Symphonia of Dawn. Tales of Tales Symphonia of Dawn of the New World. <laughs> Tales of Lymphoma. <laughs> Tales, like, nigga said Tales of Mesothelioma. <laughs> but yeah, like, you're just never gonna hold them niggas to higher standards. They don't care. They're they're just porting shit to us at this point. And them niggas over there will play that. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. They so, make the games for them. We just getting like you said, they're porting it to us. Just, all right, here y'all go. Like, okay, but what about the and if somebody else had video games? Please stop making me craft things. Yeah, I hear you on that one too, buddy. People been complaining about crafting for years, and every game that's remotely open world wants to add crafting now. Especially, especially right. If you have a crafting system, you should have a, a, a bulk or a batch crafting. That, that, that is just despicable if you don't. If you have a crafting system where I have to individually craft the item every single time, you are a bastard. You are a <laughs> bastard. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible that y'all niggas believe y'all can move this way and not have a batch crafting system knowing it's going to take me 25 of a one item to make the next item I need to make. And you think I should just, what, press this button 25 times? I think uh, some game companies are uh, masochists and they want their their consumers to have a little bit of time struggling, at least. Well, I'll like, tell you what. We're going to add all these new features and make everything futuristic. But we're going we gonna to leave this little one thing, just just a little tee-hee, just to piss you off, because we know. We know. <laughs> just to piss you off, because we know. I hate you, nigga. <laughs> we know. I cannot stand you, niggas. You know how easy it is to add batch crafting? You know yeah. what I'm not going to do? Add batch crafting. <laughs> yeah, where? I ain't doing nothing uh, about that damn batch crafting. But, uh, all right, see, so let's see what else we got. My phone. <laughs> Look at me working and potting at the same time. I'm really a different breed. Definitely but, um, telling your job. What? Okay. Nigga, I have n- Anyway. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, also don't uh, know where you work. It were say it live on air so everybody could know. No, I'm all right. I work uh for the the mesothelioma factory. Like y'all be making it there? No, nah, no, nah, other way, other way. Like we be y'all be getting it there. <laughs> <laughs> What's the purpose of the job? Just to get mesothelioma? No, nah, so they pay right. us and they just study our lungs. That's all. Um, oh, what you're a science experiment. Uh, He's, you're a victim. <laughs> um, what else we got? What else? So it's a, it's a lot on this list, man. Where we want to go from here, man? We want to. We could do Drake and Twenty One album. We could do the Eight Dollar Twitter Blue. Um, yeah, let's talk about Twitter, cause man, yeah, listen, it's cool former, when they do it. I'm a former <laughs> Elon Musk hater. I'm newly re- rehabilitated. I gotta take back everything I said about Elon, cause Twitter is amazing now. It is just a playground where kids can do whatever they want and <laughs> every other tweet is just fucking hilarious it's all of it is just comedy now everything nothing is real anymore yeah. I, I, I appreciate that it's like ah man he bringing that old feel back yeah he bringing that 2008 feel back to the internet yeah yeah man it's this is what we needed modern warfare 2 back now niggas just saying whatever on twitter oj said you know what i'm gonna be real with y'all i did it 
and you check, and it's not OJ. You know, <laughs> <laughs> George W. Bush said, "Man, I miss oh. killing the Rockies." Uh, yeah, what? What did you, you said that shit with Joe Biden? He was like, Yo, oh. I'm, "I'm using this lotion to beat my meat." Right? <laughs> yeah. oh, He's lotion. I'm stroking my shit right now. <laughs> Struggle like, shit with this lotion right now. <laughs> it's just this is how it's meant to be. Um, and, and it's it's so funny though because I remember when this deal first happened. I think it was maybe like two pods ago. Like I was on here. Not I don't even know if I was on here saying it, but I was like the person like, why y'all bugging? Ain't shit changed yet? And then I guess I was just being super naive to thinking like shit wasn't finna change. Like and niggas is just like, what you mean? Ain't shit ain't changed yet? This idiot is running it. Shit will change, and it's gonna be terrible. I'm like. Okay, yeah. I mean, I don't disagree. I just, I'm not, why y'all tripping already? And sure enough, sure enough, baby, within like two weeks. And it just got bad. There's a lot of shit that they did. I mean, I see something today. Fucking fast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Um, And I think he's just going to drain the value out of this sh- or dr- out of this shit and then just, uh, and then I mean, he's, he's going to drain it out and sell it to somebody. He, I don't know. For the low I don't, low. He's not gonna be able to get that off. I don't think. No, somebody, to somebody will buy this for nothing because it'll be at nothing by the time he does it. Like, oh, okay. I was just, yeah, it's not gonna be profit though. It's, it ain't. No, nah, mm-hmm. this is, uh, mm-hmm. it's over for him. But the thing I'm, is, you don't buy social media platforms to profit. You like, buy to get customers' data and then sell that to people. Right, right, and to sell the data for profit, and even that doesn't make you enough money. But it puts you in positions to where now you're in the middle of certain business. Uh, 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 like, like for example, right? Like, let's say I'm a dude, right? Who I might be a billionaire. I might be worth seven or eight billion dollars, right? I never had to ever interact with Elon Musk for anything in my industry ever for any reason, right? At all, because I mean, who? Why would I ever need to go to either Tesla, SpaceX, or any of that other shit? I don't need it. Starlink, or I don't need none of that, right? But then, now you bought you buy Twitter. Now suddenly, Elon Musk might be important to someone else who never. A day in their life had to think about you because now they're thinking, okay, well, he runs Twitter. If I can get in good with him, or if I could do this, or if I could do that, if I could use him for this, if I could try to get this, freak this, freak that, hmm, okay, maybe it's worth it. So that's the whole point. It puts you in positions to where now certain people pay attention to you, certain people will see you and notice you and actually, and that's all it is. It's for the visuals, it's for the uh, what is it called? Reputation laundering, right? Mm-hmm. Like now you're in a position to where somebody can basically pay you to a hey, look, bro. You know, they doing me a little bad, yo. You think, yeah, bro, I got you, yo. I got you. You know it's going to cost you, though, right? I got you, though. I for sure got you. So that's really why anyone does all of this shit, because all these things grow in value. But, like, as you can see, Twitter has existed for 13 years, only grown in value, and has broken and made a profit two times. (laughs) But still just keeps going up, because that's how this shit works. You just keep going, 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 and it's like, eventually it's just these these fake-ass valuations where the, the, the number is just, oh, it's just... They're bigger and they're expanding. They're da, da, da. Who cares? The valuation should not be continuously just sprinting to the top because there's nothing driving it other than just y'all want it to keep going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, how did Jack Dorsey become a billionaire if Twitter has only made a profit twice? Two two years, yeah. yeah literally. How, how did he become a billionaire? Where did you know money how. come from? You know how. Again, because money is fake. That's what I keep trying to say. Like, this shit is Literally. fake as hell. But, um, but, yeah, so, I mean, like, so... He did some shit today, I believe. Like he let uh hold on, hold on. let me see what it was. Um he yeah, apparently they're under fire from the Federal Trade Commission on Thursday today after a chaotic 24 hours in which new oh, subscription yeah. rules triggered a raft of fake verified account and key privacy and security executives quit. Yeah, um, so now the engineers have to just guess the FTC rules or whatever, because the niggas that are in charge of that all quit. Yeah. And so Twitter's top cybersecurity officer resigned yesterday. The chief privacy officer and chief compliance officer resigned today. Uh, well, it says all three, of them, all three of them resigned yesterday, but we heard about it today. And so pretty much the federal regulators at the FTC pretty much say, hey, look, we're tracking recent developments at Twitter with deep concern, adding that no CEO or company is above the laws and companies must follow our consent decrees, nigga. Fuck you talking about? Now, mind you, the FTC rarely issues statements ahead of enforcement actions, so I think they try to make it clear to old they boy. Like, you know, like, yeah, no, nah, we about to get these niggas out of here. And so, apparently, Twitter is currently under two consent decrees from the FTC over past security and privacy violations. It was fined $150 million in May for violating its first decree from 2011. Oh, my God. 
and the company remains under watch for any few 2011. It's a, that was 11 years ago. So basically, once you get in one of these holes, it's like a it's a it's a 360. You ain't never out that contract. Nope. That's crazy. Mm -mm. I'll tell you what. Uh, that's nuts. That's actually pretty fucking nuts. Uh, oh yeah, I love it. They said a Joe Biden account tweeted, "I've seen jokes before being taken down." Yeah, what were the jokes? Yeah. <laughs> What was, was you doing joke, in the jokes? Right? What the jokes come, on, come on, Politico. Politico, tell us what the jokes were. <laughs> Say it. Don't blur. Don't censor nothing. Say it. Uh, I was screaming. He said, I got this lotion. I'm working my dick right now. <laughs> I'm just, I'm glad that Elon Musk is finally going to be seen for the charlatan and the dumbass that he is. And I'm just sad that it took Twitter for it to happen. Yeah. I mean, and that's the kind of shame when I really think about it. It's just like, I think this was I think this is a play that more than just Elon is in on. And obviously we can see that to some degree, but I think people fail to realize like Twitter is a platform that is like there are countries that have fought tooth and nail to remove Twitter like from like they didn't even want Twitter in a country. Yeah. Because they understand niggas can link up, niggas could be in the DMs. There's a whole bunch of shit going on with Twitter where niggas was using it certain ways and they was like, nah, I don't want you niggas learning nothing from each other at all. I'm good off of that. And so uh, I think this is all like a I, listen, we're going to see some documents about this 50 years in the future. But I think it was more than just Elon in on this. There's a couple other niggas who like, yo, listen, let's just destabilize the platform. So that way it ruins the ability for people to disseminate information amongst each other. Then keep doing what we do. On top of the fact that with all of that whole thing with the check marks and all that other stuff, it's like. What's going to happen when, because somebody was already bringing it up, talking about how, like, you could use, like, spoofed accounts and, and like, like a, what was it, like, a fake, uh, uh, like, I don't know, like, fake cards and all this other shit to basically buy an account with a name under a certain thing, verify it, and put out whatever. And the problem is, you know how this site go. People don't be double checking. People don't be, you know what I'm saying, looking at shit really that hard to see, is that really LeBron James's Twitter handle? Especially if it's one character off. Yeah, nigga, please. Let it be LeBron James with a Z instead of an S. Like, same icon, same everything else, and then you tweet like them? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But trust me, it's going to be some niggas who catch it in the comments, but it's going to be plenty of niggas. Yo, you heard about Bron? Nah, what he said? He told Kyrie, your hole is me. What? Why he tell him that? I don't know. He said, yo, you a whole ass nigga. I'm like, damn. Wait, he said that? Damn. You got a Bron page. Damn, maybe he deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably deleted it because that was OD. Brown should have never said that. That's what it was. He deleted it. At least he was smart enough to delete it, you know. Um, did you see the Nintendo one? That one was pretty funny. Uh, where it was like, it's me, Mario nigger. Uh nah, <laughs> nah, it was one where Mario with the middle finger or something. And then uh, they had another <laughs> one where they posted a uh it was like some video of like uh Peter Griffin and it was naked looking like a dolphin, like Jumping in and out of the water, and then like <laughs> the audio on it was like, man, we it was like, dude, he's like, Chloe, something about the. Oh, <laughs> I, I haven't <laughs> seen that video, but I heard that audio before. Yeah, he's like, Chloe, something about the bus. And it's oh my god, she's that shit is so funny. <laughs> I've seen that audio a million times now. How, like, come on, y'all, we gotta do better as a people. <laughs> Who made this and why? What was the purpose? Oh, oh man, y'all gotta chill out, man. Um, but yeah, I got lotion. I'm stroking my dick right now. Yo, yo, man. Um, but yeah, so that was that. Uh, what else? Um, uh, da, da, da. apparently, uh, this is a sidebar, I guess. You talking about big companies? Remember Microsoft bought Activision? Yes. So apparently that deal may be in trouble uh, as the EU, the European Union, opens an investigation into the deal. Why? Uh, what they do? Uh, well, they're saying that Microsoft could be, quote, irreparably damaging the EU's cloud ecosystem and there's an antitrust complaint being filed. Now, I, I can't tell you what exactly that means. You know what I'm saying? But I, what I have noticed, bro, is the EU just what? not be, they don't be with the shit. We just went silent for like 15 seconds for me, but I'm going to assume that it was just me. Oh, yeah. I, I sure was talking. I'm sorry. It was probably um, me. Just, they probably 
heard it. But yeah, so like the EU, I, one thing I have noticed is they don't be with the shits at all. Like with a lot yeah. of these things, like uh. So and it was funny. So since the announcement, Sony voiced opinions about how the deal could affect overall competition. Bro, shut up! You are the competition, ho ass nigga. Um, and basically there was a concern that Microsoft would make Call of Duty exclusive to its own platform. Yeah. All right. Um. And then, so uh, they issued a press release stating it would be opening an investigation to assess the acquisition. Wait, you're doing all this over Call of Duty? They just doing this. I don't even think it's really over Call of Duty. I just think between Sony and the competitors, it's probably enough reason for them to be like, nah, this is sus. Nah, check this shit out, yo. Yeah, because think about it. Activision Blizzard did do all of that shit with the, well, again, we talk about the Cosby room and all of that. Like, that tanked a lot of their stock, and then Microsoft came in and said, "I bet I ain't want to pay the hundred billion. I'll just give y'all sixty nine, and we can walk walk away from it." T sixty nine T. And uh, basically, they were, next number. They were concerned that um, the acquisition would give the tech giant leverage to discourage gamers from purchasing non Windows PCs. Such foreclosure mm-hmm. strategies could reduce competition in the markets for the distribution of console and PC video games. Leading to higher prices, lower quality, less innovation, brother man. So oh, yeah. who, who's gonna tell them? Oh uh, yeah, y'all are y'all a little late on this. A little late, y'all about a decade and a half late. Who's gonna tell them? But y'all y'all on the right track. Y'all got a little hard in y'all for doing this. I respect yeah, it. Yeah, a little hard, a little hard, a little hard, a little hard, a little hard. But um, uh, what else we got? What else we got, man? Um, we could talk about uh from one trickster to another we can talk about the crypto crash i don't know you said trickster i just immediately went to loki uh yeah i was talking about elon but yeah yeah i knew, I knew once you said the crypto crash yeah let's let's get um, into this because this shit is hilarious so yeah so let's so let's I, I don't even know where this starts but I'll, I'll try to do my best i'm sure there's gonna be some niggas listening like that's not how it happened we do not care uh, I'm just reading these articles, baby boy. That's all I can do, baby. And even if it's not how it happened, it happened. That yeah, and it, he mm-hmm. he lost, he lost. So what happened? Uh, apparently, there was a quote a run on deposits that sent the crypto markets into meltdown. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. so there was a deal to sell FTX, the the crypto exchange, right, right. to to rival Binance. Right. Uh, now that deal collapsed, and why that deal collapsed? I uh, will uh, look for a second. Oh no, of course you, you got to want to make me sign in to, to see this. Uh, let's see, uh, Binance uh, FTX deal off. Yeah, or explain. There we go. Uh, so scrap this letter of intent to buy them uh, as a result of corporate due diligence. Oh, that don't sound good. As well as yeah, the latest look into these niggas is like yeah, oh, literally. Uh, dude, as well just as... mean I did my job properly. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Oh, I did my job." Yeah, we don't want this. Uh, as well as the latest news reports regarding mishandled customer funds and alleged U.S. agency investigation, we have decided Ooh. that we will not pursue the potential acquisition of FTX. So honestly, this sounds like boy, oh boy, was in trouble, and he knew he was in trouble, and he thought, "I, right, you know what." I'm gonna sell it to these niggas. Yeah, let me see if I can sell it slide on out of there. Like, and so apparently it says that you the US Justice Department had regulators that contacted Binance. Um, they've heard from US financial regulators, in addition to regulators in Europe, requesting insight into what uh uh oh, and the, the regulators were requesting insight into what Binance learned. That's hilarious. Like niggas was just like, why why what y'all pull out for? It was like, oh, it was it, it just didn't look good. Yeah. Yeah, what, what what didn't look good though? Like which part specifically didn't look good? Yeah, like what they got going on over there? Oh, um, shit, so apparently went, oh, so apparently FTX uh had a um what is it called? A liquidity a liquidity crunch, right? Uh which again, all this shit sounds like this is just this was just a scheme. And this old mm-hmm. boy was just gonna money launder, not money launder, but you know, like just launder his way up to the top, like uh Get some bread here, take out some more money here, take out some more money here, get some bread here, take some more money out here. And you know what I mean? And it usually works when you're a rich guy. But the problem is you built this all on crypto. And I don't think you ever understood that this shit was capped to begin with. Like, this is when I feel like people people fall victim to their own scheme. Where it's just like, did you not realize this was capped? Truly. You get to a point where they think they're too big to bust. Yeah, that is true. 
That is true. Um, and so he said he's gonna try to raise funds over the next week to prop up the exchange. Um, and mind you, people basically wanted their bread. Uh and they wanted their bread, and so it is unclear who will put money into FTX after Binance backed out. Nigga, nobody. Um, the total amount owed by FTX remains unclear, although it could be as much as eight billion dollars. So oh, shortly man. before the deal fell through, he held a call where he appeared disheveled and report apologized repeatedly, uh, emphasizing how much he had messed up. He blamed some of their struggles on a negative public relations campaign against the firm that he said, uh, oh, you niggas, all, everyone's a victim. Um, even Sequoia Capital, right, which is one of FTX's largest backers, said it now considered its $200 million investment worthless in a letter to its mm. own investors. The firm said FTX was at risk of bankruptcy, though it didn't know, quote, the full nature and extent of the risk. Hold on. Let's keep going. Paradigm, a crypto-focused investment fund, invested $278 million. In a letter to their investors, they said its investment was likely to go to, quote, zero. FTX's problems will, quote, take many months to fully understand. God damn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So dozens of investors, including major firms like BlackRock, uh, all these other niggas had previously committed money to them, and they were considered one of the more promising and stable crypto exchanges. They're under investigation by the SEC. Uh, they've been requesting that the company turn over information for months. Uh, the FTC is also looking into the collapse. In addition, federal prosecutors in Manhattan have an inquiry. Oh, they on your ass. Niggas is lining up to, to spank you. Yo. <laughs> no, you're fucking cooked, bro. Yeah. Um, and he, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I tell you what, niggas is lining up to put belt to ass. Yeah, you're fried, bro. So he's not gonna actually get any jail time for you, though, right? It, that's he almost just... never how this works, no. But uh, he is cooked. He is cooked. Um, and yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I listen. This crypto shit, like, eh, brother, man. Like, y'all gotta remember, this shit is just a bag. Get your bag and go. Y'all supposed to get yeah. y'all bag and go. Y'all, y'all idiots is the problem is y'all really sitting here, really believing and staying with it and thinking like, nah, bro. It's the when ha, what can I buy with the crypto? That's the problem. Y'all haven't translated yet. Y'all haven't made that trans that crossover. And we had a small little point where niggas was buying tickets with Dogecoin and, and all of that. And then we didn't see any more of that. And that was it. That was the best we were gonna get. If y'all niggas would have went that route, y'all maybe had a chance here. But nobody yeah. <clears throat> like y'all keep doing this. Started y'all started with the NFT bullshit. You did the crypto exchange bullshit. It's like y'all exchanging all these fucking money, sixteen billion dollar crypto thing. It's because what are y'all doing with it? It's all FOMO. It's all niggas want to get in on the ground floor, like Bitcoin, like Dogecoin. Niggas want that boom. They want easy money. So any shit coin that comes up, niggas dump in seventeen thousand dollars, hoping that it gets to fucking you know a dollar or two dollars, so they'll be rich. But no, it's it's not gonna happen. You lightning can only strike so many times. It struck with uh Bitcoin, obviously struck with Ethereum. It almost struck with Dogecoin, but we I made like seventeen thousand dollars off of Dogecoin, but that's because I put in like I don't know a hundred bucks when it was less than a fraction of a fraction of a cent. Yeah. Like when I bought it, it was like point zero 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 seven cent, and then yeah. it got up to seventy five cents. So that hundred bucks went up to like seventeen thousand. Yeah, I didn't it, become a millionaire. You got in early. You got in super early. Yeah, Wait, I got in a year before like everybody was gun ho on crypto. Like I just was just going through Robinhood, and I saw I was like, "Huh, this is cheap. What if this blows up like Bitcoin?" And then it went it up, blew to... up like Bitcoin. Well, yeah. it didn't blow up like if it blew up like Bitcoin, nigga, you genuinely yeah. would have been a millionaire. Yeah, if it blew like Bitcoin, uh, I wouldn't be sitting in this place I'm sitting right now. That's for damn sure. Uh, but what else? Hold on, let me let me keep cooking FTX real quick. Uh, Tether freezes forty six million dollars of something held by FTX following law enforcement requests. Yeah, you're gone. You're done for, buddy. Get to the um, best part. Get to the best part. Yeah. The best part ain't happening. Yeah. No, I mean about how he lost like. 93% of his oh money. yeah no he lost 96% of his force his net worth was 16 billion uh, uh a couple days ago i guess and now it is sitting at 900 million dollars 
That Which is again, such... I still am confused how y'all calculate this because what he had this this crypto exchange is worth nothing at this point. It's worth nothing. Your shit's frozen. The feds is on it. It's 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 over. It's worth nothing. You're probably gonna make it out of here with nothing left. So I'm just confused as to. And granted, sometimes it does happen, right? Sometimes niggas might be running these long ass schemes and scams, and they might have half a billion dollars set aside. Like eh, maybe your shit go wrong, but I just don't. I just don't imagine. Uh, one, have you seen what the guy looks like? I just don't imagine a nigga like him is thinking this far in the future. I have seen him. That nigga looks like your generic hooky World of Crypto Warcraft bro, player. Like, <laughs> World of Warcraft player. Yeah, so he wasn't thinking of the future. He was just thinking, I'm gonna get as rich as possible, as quick as possible. Ain't setting nothing aside. Yeah, man. So from one scam to another, man. Uh Daniel Snyder or Dan Snyder, whatever you want to call him. The uh, no, not footman, no, the I'm, owner I'm, of the the Washington football team, which I will not be calling them musty niggas the commanders. Uh remember when he said he wanted to sell last week? I, if I want this shit after like yeah. fighting tooth and nail to not sell his thing, yeah. Well, he did all of that and said, "Yo, anybody want this?" And then decided, "Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah." Somebody come get this. Somebody come get this. And then like the day after that, we found out the attorney general was about to launch an investigation. I'm like, ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. Heard you, heard you. He said, "Yeah, let me get up out of here real quick for y'all, for y'all cook me." And so literally today though, the the. D.C. Attorney General filed a lawsuit against Dan Snyder, the Commanders, Roger Goodell, and the NFL. That nigga said he won everybody. And so, basically, he's suing them all for, quote, colluding to deceive fans. Well, they talking collusion. They talking That's collusion. That's favorite crime, yo. Yeah, uh, and he said it's all for their roles in covering up the workplace and sexual misconduct allegations. Oh yeah, this is this is oh, definitely yeah, this nigga about to be cooked. Yeah, because remember, remember there was also that whole thing where they said that that and remember he had to go sit in front of one of them congressional committees because they was saying that he lied about like the ticket prices and all of that mm-hmm. shit. And so that mind you, that's even entirely separate from this. It looks like this nigga was doing wild shit. Did he just think he was just immune to getting caught or what was? The deal? I mean, he is. He's a billionaire. And all. I think he just kind of failed to realize. Like, I don't know. He must have hit somebody back. Off, somebody off. I don't know. Um. Yeah, Uh. he said he noted that the office couldn't file a civil rights lawsuit with regard to crimes against alleged victims because the actions occur outside of D.C. So, uh, da 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 release a statement in which they say that is further evidence of what they've all known, that the commanders in the NFL have engaged in deception and lies designed to conceal the team's decades of sexual harassment and abuse. Yeah. Decades! Sounds about right. I mean, a woman who worked in 2008 was one of the people who were part of that lawsuit. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Lord. Uh, So, I, well, I'll be curious to see how this works. Um, because my thing is, I don't think there's really ever been another NFL commissioner that's had to deal with social media. I mean, you think about it. Because Goodell's been there since when? Like, he's been there since the advent of social media. Yeah. Like, so, he's been the commissioner since, yeah, 06. So, it's been Goodell. He's the only Damn, one who's these, ever had to deal with this. Do these niggas not have terms? They no. just, until they fuck up bad enough to get fired or they die, they just yeah, in there? Those niggas want you gone. Now, granted, he had a lot of stuff. He had, like, the whole spy gate, the bounty gate, yeah. uh, the, the, the concussion joint. A whole bunch of stuff. Uh, 2017, he signed a new contract that starts in 2019 and all of that. Uh, oh, I didn't know. He's the son of a former U.S. senator. That makes a lot more oh, sense. Man, man nothing is going to happen to that nigga for sure. No, so no. that's why these and people the were playing man, them little nasty games. His dad was Charles Goodell, and uh, da, 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 who represented New York in the House of Representatives and the Senate. In both cases, he came into office following the deaths of his predecessors. Holy shit. First in a special election, and second as a temporary appointee succeeding Robert F. Kennedy. What's up? Nah, he did that. He nah, he had a hand yeah, in that. Oh no, bro. <laughs> oh no, brother. That's a little suspicious. How both of the times that he got elected came in after the death of one of his competitors, one of his opponents. Oh no. Nah, he was he a mobster on the side? Like, what's going on? Uh, he, 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 um, 
yeah, I'm trying to see what else he got going on. Uh, da, 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 yeah, um, yeah, that boy a little, boy a little wild. Um, I see freak bull. I see another ass freak bull. Um, but yeah, so yeah, he's really the only one that's had to deal with social media. So it's like his job has always been to make money and protect the shield, and it's like it's been getting harder and harder to protect the shield when there's a lot of people online who are doing just you know amateur sleuthing work. And when you combine that with actual real niggas doing the real deep dives, yeah. Um, so I don't know, man. I mean, maybe this gets him out of here. I'd like to see it. I don't. I, I want Roger Goodell gone, to be honest. Um, I think he's holding the league back. I think oh, yeah. he's the oh, last. Yeah. He's the last like guard between the league modernizing itself and the league staying where it's at. Now, granted, that doesn't necessarily mean the next guy is going to be open to that. But I no, think you know they're gonna hire all the, the owners of the teams gonna get together and pick the best nigga oh, yeah, to have yeah. no progress whatsoever. Oh yeah, yeah. But I, I definitely think like the fans and everybody who's watching is kind of at the point now where it's just like yo, something's gotta give, bro. Like like because none of these leagues are, are perfect, right? Like the NBA does shy shasty, shysty and shady shit. They all do. Every league does. The NHL does they they all do. better than the fucking NFL. The NFL yeah, NFL is the worst. Out of right. all the leagues. Yeah, literally. Literally. So it's just like I think that's really one of the ones where it's like, yeah, it's the last frontier, man. And I and I think uh I think they need to get to it. To be honest with you, I think it's about time. This should be enough. Um again, will it be enough? Uh I, I usually say no because I just don't think niggas this powerful or this easy to take down. But um shit, I'm all for it. Keep pushing. Keep burying these niggas, especially Dan Snyder. I want him going. If I can't okay. get Roger Goodell, I want Dan. Get, you know what I'm saying? At least yeah. we're going to get Dan. Dan is yeah. done for sure. I, yeah. I, I, if I, I can't sure. get Roger Goodell, I will take Dan Snyder in lieu of that. Uh, But I ain't done. I'm still fighting. I, I want I want, I want you. <laughs> <laughs> I want you. <laughs> um, But, yeah, man. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just... For me, it's just one of the ones. It's about time. It's really about time. It's about time for this nigga to go. 100%. Like, it's just time for you to go. I'm sick of powerful people just getting away with whatever the fuck they want to. Mm hmm. It mm-hmm. happens far too often. Far too often. And speaking of powerful people getting away with whatever they want to, that you is. Talk about me? No. Oh. That is not. What is happening to Kyrie? Let me tell you. Oh, no. Him niggas getting cooked. So, uh, I don't know if anyone saw the little net stipulations that they laid uh, down upon Kyrie. Yeah, so. Um, but uh, one thing I thought that was interesting was that, well, first off, I guess I'll just read the stipulations, and then I'll read what the uh, vice president of the NBA Players Association said. Uh, who is Jalen Brown, by the way, which I didn't know. But I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. But uh, so his stipulations are as follows, right? It's five of them. Uh, he's suspended for a minimum of five games, and then they gave him a series of items he got to complete before he come back. One, he has to apologize and or apologize slash condemn the movie. Uh, I'm like, is that an either or? I don't, I don't, <laughs> or is that a both? Right, five hundred thousand dollar donation to anti hate causes. Um, and that won't be good because I would just donate bread to an anti-black cause, like, or not anti, but like anti-black, anti, anti, you know what I'm saying, like pro-black, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, sensitivity training, anti-Semitic training. Um, he has to meet with the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, comma Jewish leaders. I'm like, can y'all specify, like, who who are these Jewish leaders? Well, isn't the head of ADL uh, Jewish? Well, yeah, so, yeah. ADL was founded in response to like uh, anti-Semitism years, years, years back. Um, I had problems with the ADL, but that I'll, I'll say a that lot a of people later. Yeah, a lot of people have problems with that. Yeah, I'll save that a little bit later. Have a lot of ties to Zionists. And, uh-huh. uh, oh yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. Like, it's a difference between being, you know, anti-Semitic and then just anti-Zionism. Which yeah. y'all will lump into the Which same. They, category. they do that on purpose. They do that. On oh purpose no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. We don't need to get into all that though. But. Yeah, uh, and we probably will at some point. Uh, but um, and then the last one, they got to meet with Nets owner Joe Sy to demonstrate understanding. 
Um, now, this nigga is, is this a child? He in trouble. He got to meet with the principal to show he knows what he did was wrong. <laughs> yeah, like, and people were just like, yeah, I mean, this list is just, it seems rather extreme and da da da. And so Jalen Brown, the VP of the National, uh, the NBA Players Association, said, I don't believe Kyrie Irving is anti-Semitic. The terms for his return, they seem like a lot. And a lot of the players expressed discomfort with the terms. He made a mistake. He posted something. He should be held accountable for it. But we are in uncharted territory. Uh, and basically, his whole thing about uncharted territory was essentially saying that the contracts don't necessarily speak to these sort of things. Where like, mm-hmm. yeah, it speaks to if I do something conduct unbecoming, right? If I do something like bad enough, the team can decide, yeah, I'm good. But our contracts don't necessarily say anything like you can stop me from playing until I do something. You get what I'm saying? Like it, like th- th- that's never been a thing. Like, imagine if I'm a coach and say you come into now again. Let's take it off the anti-Semitism for a second. Let's say I come into uh, a locker room and just I, I'm, I'm I'm beefing with other niggas in the locker room, and then so you as a coach is like, listen, you can't practice, you can't play until you do these four things, and it's like apologize to so and so, and then da da da. Like then it could get scary, right? Because obviously in this situation, I think Kyrie like. My nigga, you you put your foot in your mouth and you stepped in it and then you doubled and tripled down. Like, I mean, all the shit they're asking you to do, I mean, it really wouldn't have been as bad had you just said my fault yeah, the first time. It's but, that's my whole thing, is the fact that he doubled down on it and then tripled down on it afterwards. I'm like, no, nah, and then walked it back anyway. That's my problem. Yeah. And then walked it back there anyway. Because look at some of the people who have made some of these similar mistakes. Nick Cannon, for example. Nick Cannon mm-hmm. didn't post a link, he said that shit himself. Mm-hmm. And they was like, yeah, Nick, uh, you want to do me a favor and not say no shit like that? And then Nick said, yeah, you're right. My bad. My bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he Everybody said my already forgot about that shit. Now, now, do we think Nick Cannon reneged on his thoughts and believes that quickly? No. But he understood. But he understood. Is in danger. Yeah, Viacom was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, Wild and Out is ours, by the way. We, we about to find some way to get this. And he said, oh, okay, I'm fucking up. I'm fucking up. My bad. My bad, yeah. <laughs> my bad, yeah. He my fault. <laughs> Yeah, my fault. I'm just, I just, I talk about what the white people be doing in private. Cause I don't, I, yeah, so that's my thing. So that's the blueprint right there, right? Where he already let you know that's one, right? And then even LeBron, look at LeBron, not with the anti Semitism or anything, but look at how he handled China, right? Remember when Daryl Morey said what he said uh, about the, the Hong Kong protesters and yeah. they what, and the lead pulled that nigga to the side and said, nigga, we are in China currently. You better shut your mouth. We are in China, in, inside of, in, 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 in the presence of China. We are there trying to promote this business. And you going to say some shit like that while we there, nigga? Nigga, shut up. I shut was, up. I was trying to do what I thought was right. Yeah, I, I was just trying to do what right. He said, nigga, I know you right, but shut up. Shut up. And he did. Did he not? He shut up. And so what happened? Brown ain't say nothing either. He came back, still ain't say nothing. And it wouldn't make sense for Brown to say something. Because if my own league, the league I work for, is telling another executive within their league to shut up, and they pow exactly. pow him, they slapping him on the wrist like, "Yo, bad, bad. What you doing, yo? Chill out, yo. I'm not saying you was wrong for what you said. I'm saying don't be saying shit like that. Like, you definitely 100 right, but you can't say that. We trying to get bread here. Yeah, yo. we trying to get a bag from them. You say that, they gonna say, "Oh, word, that's what you think." All right, say less. Cancel anything. Nah, turn off. And they did. Remember when they were there? They literally like, I think I don't, I don't know if they canceled the game, but they like cut off. Um, it was like certain teams, and it was a specific team or something like that that they wouldn't show. You know what I mean? I think it was uh Enes Cantor when he was uh or Enes Freedom, I guess, at this Freedom. point. Now mind you, he's a he's a bozo, he's a sucker, but he was on uh what what team was he on? I think the Celtics at the time. He's on some team, and he was saying that shit, all that shit he was saying about China and all that. And granted, he's right, but like you're still like look who you're polying with, look who you're in, in, in cahoots with. Like you're wrong, you're right for the wrong reasons. Like, um, and so he did all of that, and then they were like, well, we're just not going to show Celtics games in China. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, brother, man, you can't – this is a lose-lose. If you want to expand that business or you – anything. So Brown just didn't say nothing. Still ain't said nothing because it's just like, bro, my employer is not going to speak on this. My employer is not going to have my back. My employer actively wants their dollars. I can see that with my own eyes. Not to mention I got a huge Nike deal where the Nike factory is at. Does anyone know? They in oh, China. Oh, the group? Oh, okay. Yeah, they in China, nigga. So it's just like, bro, nigga really realized, nah, this ain't the bag I want to, nah, I don't want to dip into this. I want. So that's my whole thing when there has been a, a blueprint laid. If you want to ignore it, there's a blueprint. If you want to say something, but damn, my fault, my fault. All right, I got to act quickly. My bad. 
even if you look back, right? Do you remember Riley Cooper, receiver for the Eagles? Mm-hmm. White boy said the N word at a Kenny Chesney concert, which is hilarious. Yeah. Like that's the most what, that's the funniest what's place. What's going to on at Kenny Chesney? Yeah, why was you at the Kenny Chesney concert feeling like y'all hop over this fence and beat these niggas up? <laughs> like, why was that on your mind at the Kenny Chesney concert? But nonetheless, he said what he said, and what happened? They brought him right behind closed doors. They had a team meeting with him. He met with the team, mostly niggas, right? He met with as Mike Vick. What Mike Vick? What you think, y'all? And that's my whole thing. That's where I come back to what it comes back to. Because I always say, if we wanted to make these things problems, we could. We choose not to. And so that's why it's like, I don't like, again, I still feel like these are things that in terms of all the things that they ask him for, is it a little cruel or not cruel? But it's like parading him. It's just like, yeah, no, nah, I'm going to make a show of you. Make an and example. I, yeah. yeah. And that's exactly what it is. Now, again, people was like, oh, that's buck breaking. I'm like, bro, you can't buck break a millionaire and not take his money. That, that doesn't make sense. What are you talking about? It's not like, bro, cut it out. Cause I, cause I, I clowned you a little bit. That's buck breaking. That's the case. This shit. Every nigga everywhere gets buck broke every single day. And you that's like, I just, ain't one saying this is buck breaking. Like, bro, come on now. I, I hate this thing. I hate that the modern day lynch and shit. And I was like, bro, that's crazy. Cause you know what happens usually when people get lynched, they die. Yeah, you talking about modern day lynches? Niggas still get lynched. Yeah, <laughs> you <laughs> literally, dummy, you dummy. But that's my whole thing. Where I'm just like, bro. To me, I'm not. They're absolutely justified in this. Now, is it still extreme? Yeah, sure. Things can be extreme and you can be justified. For example, you cheat on your girl and your girl said, all right, these are the conditions for us to get back together. She might say some shit to where you're just like, hey, yo, brother, come on. It's up to you at that point to decide if you want to do exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. Not allowed to do it. Exactly. But my thing is, is she not justified? Nigga, you was moving walk. And then when I asked you, you double down on it and then triple down on it. All right, nah, nah, nah. Now I'm going to cook you because you doubled and tripled down. You could have just said, wait, you did what? My, my I just, I just wish bad. I had insight into Kyrie's mind and what the fuck he be thinking. He's a about contrarian. It. It's just I don't even simple. think that. I think he's just stupid. Well, I mean, because I mean, he was talking about be flat Earth. I mean, yeah, but I really need to know, like, after you got this vitriolic response from everybody, everybody, yeah. not a single person said you was no, right. That only charges up contrarians. I don't think you understand. But no. No, but what I'm saying is, did you think you would get no backlash? Did you no, you thought you could just double and triple down? Nigga, he nigga started seeing himself as Mandela. People fail to realize when you get like this. No, nah, that's not up, even a criteria. That's some savior complex type shit. It is, it is. I'm in like yeah. Nelson Mandela, yeah. But that's part of the reason why niggas choose to be contrarians. Because they understand, like, they go against the grain and then sit up here and then try to play victim when the world punishes you for go like, bro, it don't matter what era you've ever lived in in your life. When you go against the grain, you are always going to get powered. They're always going to slap your wrist, and they're going to start with a wrist slap. And once you keep going, they're going to bury you. That is always how this has been. Nigga, when they was protesting the Vietnam War, what they was doing to them boys? They was in their ass. Mm -hmm. They was doing them bad. That was white folks, Especially too. Ali. They was smoking Ali. Right. Smoking Ali. Smoking whoever they could. Whoever they could, you didn't even have to be Ali. You could have just been a, a normal everyday nigga with a slightly a decent platform in the seventies, and they like or the sixties or something. And niggas, nah, nah, you talking about yeah. what? Yeah, nah. They were you smoking know. the Dixie chicks when they was trying to the protest. Yeah. Hello, nine eleven. Hello, well, it wasn't protest nine eleven, but the Afghan war. So three white women. Yeah, I was smoking them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. So that's my whole thing. So it's like I'm not gonna sit up here and, and say that. Now, granted, based on where they stood, I'm not going to say it was justified, but I absolutely understand why they smoked her. Because at that point, everyone was charged. It was an emotional charging, right? Niggas was charged up off of 9-11 and everything else. Like, oh, we got to go get them, yo. They did this to us, yo. We got to go get them, yo. And then think about it. You just like, yo, chill out, yo. We got all that war shit, yo. We Y'all bugging out. Like, think about it. Imagine your mans get got and y'all trying to get it back in blood. And you got one nigga in the room who just like... Nah, I think we just no, I'm not really we, with that, we tripping out because we doing too much. Right? We doing too much now. Nah, you just pussy, nigga. Lay down, like, <laughs> like, like get him, get her out the room, like get him out the room, yo, because we about to ride out. So, um, but my thing is, uh, so one, I do think that in in terms of the the players' association, what they said, there is no precedent for this, right? In terms of like you got a, a checklist of shit to do before you can come back to the team. I haven't seen that really before. Like te teams will give you those like sort of verbally, like, listen, I expect you to do so and so, but it's never like I'm literally double checking and triple checking. Yeah, like I'm making sure you before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like like because some teams are like, I want you to lose 35 pounds. And if you come to camp a little bit overweight, they don't literally cut you. 
they'll probably just be like, well, I'm disappointed. We're going to put you at the bottom of the death chart and you got to work your way back up. But you can still practice. You can still do everything you're supposed to be doing. We just, but it's like, this is a whole different thing. We're like, nigga, you can't come back to the game until we do all of this. So I do get that part. Um, and I do think that is something that the Players Association, to me, I treat it, it's like a union, right? Right or wrong, they're going to fight for these rights in this scenario. It don't matter whether it's Kyrie. It don't matter whether it was anti-Semitism. They don't even care about that. It's just like, listen, dog, like I have to fight for, you know what I mean? Because then the problem is what happens if I'm a, a creative enough owner or a creative enough GM or something, and I see this and I say, okay, I can apply this to other shit that's really not, you know what I'm saying? Like I can apply this to other shit I don't like. Mm-hmm. So if I got a player who's just doing things I don't like, and maybe these are things that are frowned upon, but they ain't wild. It's just, I don't want you doing that. I can then add a list of contractual obligations. You got to do these seven things before you can come back to the facility. And it's like, nah, no way, bro. Like, no way. Um, well, but, they, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like you're saying, there's no way that they could possibly just come up with a list of shit for niggas to do. They can't make that a regular thing. I feel like, like we said, you know they, they, will. they can't do especially because this is a different situation. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is niggas would. And I, I think, obviously, it would be certain scenarios, right? You can't just employ this whenever, but it could. It's, it's a slope. It could get there. It may take time, but it could definitely get there. Mm-hmm. But my whole thing is, again, the easiest way to avoid all these things is one or two options, and you pick neither. A is, is just shut the fuck up for the jump. But, again, people are like, oh, shut up and dribble. You can't do that when you post a video. Oh, I mean, well, you post a yeah. DVD, whatever. And then one, but the part that kills me though is like, y'all remember, do y'all understand that that link that Kyrie posted, it was from Alex Jones. Yeah. Like, just so we clear, just so we Kyrie clear. Kyrie has been a shithead. He was, that was another thing. I forgot about the Alex Jones shit, but he was posting links from Alex Jones. Y'all should have known from then the type of nigga that Kyrie was. He's not smart. Actually, no, I don't think that particular link was from Alex Jones. But he's posted no, no, no. shit before. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm talking about. The the shit that he posted was a video from Prime, from Amazon. Mm-hmm. I thought you and, were bringing up the specific time that he sent a link from Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember that, though. Yeah, I remember that. Um, that was that New World Order shit, talking about releasing plagues and all of that other stuff. This is, the, see, this is the shit that I'm talking about, why I say Kyrie is not smart. You, know, you take, a, take away the fact that it's Alex Jones that you quoted. The fact that you're talking about this whole new world order and like, come on, son, you smart, dumb conspiracy niggas. I'm tired yeah. of y'all. I feel like, and, and again, but this is when I say contrarian because it's like there's a prevailing narrative, and I think he's one of those people who will always go against it, even if the prevailing narrative has a, a good amount of truth to where it makes sense to him, it's logical to me. Nah, 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 nah. That's not what I want. I don't want it. like. And, and I, we've seen it between the anti-vaccine, right? Between, and mind you, even some of the issues that he's been right on is exactly that. When he stood with them people at Standing Rock, it was still going against the grain. It was being a contrarian because really? the grain was, nah, they can't, you can't just hold up somebody's business and protest and da-da-da. But then niggas are like, well, yeah, I can if this business or this, this pipeline is going to destroy our fucking community. What are you talking about? They got to do whatever I take. They got to blow this bitch up. What are you talking about? You're right. Because he, I was supporting him when he was standing with the yeah. You're yeah. right. But that that's still contrary. That's just yeah. against the grain. So I think that's what I mean when I say there's consistency there. There's not consistency in terms of his actual values or beliefs, but in terms of the way of, listen, what yeah, it's that uh, that meme where nigga, I'm just looking around to make sure I don't fit in. <laughs> <laughs> you looking like, everybody doing that? Uh, nah, we ain't off of that. Everybody like, what? What, what do you mean? Nah, we ain't off of that. Why? Why are we not off of that? Because y'all off of that. So, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I, I do think that Adam Silver will probably uh, try to find some sort of way to mediate this and try to make it somewhere in the middle. Like, all right, all right, all right. Let's have him meet with, the, meet with somebody, meet with the Nets owner, and then do a little training, and then we'll figure something out. And we'll, you know what I mean? We'll be able to write some of all that other shit off or whatever. But to me, uh, it's just a matter of, this is what I mean when it's like, don't step out there and say things that you can't stand on. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it to yourself. Yeah. That's all. I, that's why I'm saying it's not even shut up and dribble. It's shut up and dribble if you're going to step out there and say something that you're not going to stand on. 
it's, it's, it's an if. It's not a just, listen, I don't want to hear nothing from you niggas. I just want y'all to shut up and play ball. Nah, listen, you I'm not a pocket. You want, but if you're not going to stand on it. If you're not going to stand on it, now we sitting up here chatting about everything but basketball. And it's your fault. It's not my fault. It's not they fault. It ain't the Jewish people fault. It ain't the ADL fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. Because, again, if I'm a white man and I post birth of a nation, we're going to be talking about racism all week. All week. And it ain't the news fault. I mean, granted, they're going to cover it because you know how the news do. But it ain't their fault. You gave them exactly what they were looking for. Now they got the ammo. I'm going to run this bitch back all week. And if I'm Kyrie, I saw how they did me with the anti-vax shit and how they just parroted the same talking points over and over and over, making content for weeks out of some shit that really didn't last that long. Like, bro, I t- y'all knew I wasn't getting a shot. That should have been a couple shows and then it should have been over with. Why was this a, a news cycle topic? Reporters kept asking, for what? What are y'all asking? I already didn't get it, and I already told y'all why I wasn't finna get it. What are we asking this again? So my problem is, when you put this out there, you are emboldening them to do their job and to keep on doing it. They got to produce something, nigga. And once you give them something to produce, oh, yeah, baby, they on it. They on it. And so that's why I'm like, don't get these niggas the the ballot. Don't ever make it easy for these niggas to bake you. That's what I'm always going to say. Nah, that's on you, because you made this too easy for them to cook you. What's really pissing me off about this situation is just, uh, well, obviously Kyrie himself, but the reaction of other black people that mm-hmm. I'm assuming some people don't know what was in the actual movie that he posted. So they're like, what's wrong with saying uh, black people were the original Hebrews? What's wrong with that? First off, that's stupid. But second off, <laughs> In the movie, they were saying that the Holocaust wasn't real, which is textbook anti-Semitism. Uh, okay, so again, I will push back a little bit and understand that I'm not for this, but uh, Wait. that was in the book, not the movie. That's not an important distinction, but it's one people have made to me. It's This was based on a book? There was a book written by the same guy who then directed this film. The film doesn't have everything the book has, but for me, if that's the source material... It's still the same. I don't care if you omitted it from the movie. You get what I mean? You knew that was too far, so you omitted it from the movie. I don't care why you omitted it. Like it's like for me, for example, like let's say you write a book. You write uh one of them uh the Game of Thrones book. What is it? Song of Fire and Ice or whatever the hell it is. And you oh. got some wild shit in the book. And then you make the movie, and the movie not as wild. And then people promote the movie, and now we beefing over the movie. You still wrote the same book. You wrote the book. Nobody else. The nigga who directed the movie wrote the book. So if you put that nasty shit in the book, you are a nasty nigga. And now, conversely, or now, uh, uh, let's keep it going. If a nasty nigga wrote a book and he was nasty in the book, when you write a movie, you still a nasty nigga. I don't care if you clean it up. No, don't take away the nastiness. Yeah, freak ass boy. I don't care. That shit don't. So that's why I was like, bro, like, so, but there is a slight difference. Like, because in the movie, I don't think it specifically said that, but they did talk about like them five falsehoods and Mind you, some of this shit was just so easily disprovable. Like they was talking about, oh, it was only two hundred and fifty thousand Jews in like Europe during the, like the, the reign of the Reich, and I was like, bro, it was three million Jews in Poland alone in nineteen thirty something. I get that was ten years before, but where would they have gone? Where did they go, bro? Three million in Poland alone. Not to mention, where did the Nazis go first? Mm. Who they invade first? Huh? When World War II broke out, where did they go first? It was Poland. I wonder why. If it was 3 million Jews in Poland, I wonder why they started there. Like, that's my whole point where it's just like, bro, don't lie to me, yo. Don't don't sit up here and fucking play with me, yo. Like, niggas really got the nerve to sit up here and act like there was 250,000 Jewish people in all of Europe during that reign. You sound drunk. Because think about it. Then, if that's the case, let's just look at the number of Jews that came to America and came to all these other places as refugees afterwards. Where did they come from? Huh? And then, in that same movie, or I don't know if it was the book, did they say something outlandish like 70% of the Jewish population in America owned slaves? Um, Which is... I'm not sure. Which is blatantly misleading because there was only about six Jewish families in Charleston, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. 70% of them owned slaves. 
That's that's like it's like four. It's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. So it's like four families so, though. Like so it's like, but again, you're you're it's the same, but yeah, you're conflating uh uh the same sort of thing where it's like if that's the case, I can use the same logic against Christians. I can use the same logic of, shit. I could it's probably worse if I count all the Christian niggas who was toting slaves across the seas. Oh yeah. All of this is just all this anti-Semitism, it's literally just right wing talking points, and they're just, niggas are so blinded that they don't understand that this is all deliberately put out in this fashion to pit people against each other, to pit Jewish people and black people against each other. Mm. They want us at odds. It, they literally put this media out in this way, looking to find the weakest links in the black community. And all of this stems from some black people are ashamed of their heritage and they just refuse to believe that they come from slaves. So we got it. We, we was kings. Yeah. We, and we that's didn't my come whole from slavery. Issue. We you were the still, original Jews. But my problem still comes back to when you, first off, first off, the we was kings point is such a great point, right? Because I tell people all the time, I don't care what race you are. I don't care what y'all beliefs are. Do you know how a kingdom works? A kingdom with a king. It's it, it's it's a dictatorship. So my whole point is, I, these dreams y'all have of like benevolent kings, it ain't real. They might have been decent. You get what I'm saying? They might have been niggas with hearts, I suppose. But like that, that's not how a kingdom works. It's like, nah, bro, man. I can't, I can't lead an empire and be a benevolent nigga. It's just not how it works. I gotta take over some shit, right? So my whole point is, I think that's and it kind of, but it speaks to the mindset that people are of the like they want to believe so bad that they come from a history of rulers, that come from a history of ancient people who who ruled and and da, da, da. and they did, they did. But the problem is, I think y'all want to. It's like y'all simultaneously want that similar history that the white folks got, but at the same time, y'all different than them. And that's the part that kills me, where it's like y'all want to be white without being white so bad. Like it's like it's like this odd really? dichotomy of the ones that's in control. Like I wanted to right, right, because I always say that. I always say, all right, let's pretend. Let's let, let's just move forward. Let me pretend you're right. We are the original Jews, right? So then, what does that mean moving forward? What happens? Come on, tell me what comes next. We gotta eradicate the niggas. That's 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 capping, right? Right? Oh, yeah. oh, right? oh! Come on now, come on now, because niggas is faking and flogging, right? If I'm really, I'm the original bloods, the original crips, and these niggas is fake bloods. What do we do there? Come on, somebody tell me. <laughs> somebody tell me. What do we do with the fake bloods, the niggas who's false flagging that they fake banging? What do we do with them? Hmm? I wasn't gonna go that far. I mean. But that's my question. What do we do with them? And we know what the question, what the we answer know. is. Yeah, we know. So, all right, boom. Moving past that, right? Even in that same thing, they're talking about how uh, Jewish people refer to some people as Goyim, right? And I think Goyim is literally like, uh, uh, I forgot, I looked into this. Mind you, it was one day I got sick of it. I, I was looking into the Talmud, nigga. Like, ooh. not, yeah, not the Torah, the Talmud, bro. Like, ooh. I was looking at Adam, high Adam. Like, yeah, some of the, you know, Jewish folks like, oh, hi, Adam. Oh, he on his bag. Yeah, I'm in my bag, nigga. I know what it was. Um, and so long story short, a lot of these quotes that they use to justify like, oh, they Jewish people think that we're we're like less than cattle. They think we dogs and they think dog. A lot of that yeah. shit, y'all, it's the same way y'all use the Bible. Y'all just take a context. Y'all take a, a, a quote, take it all the way out of context. And it sounds insane. But then when you throw it right back in the context, people fail to realize how much of the Bible is metaphorical, how much of, uh, of the Talmud, all these uh, books are metaphorical. Right, like also, I want people to think about this. Um, I don't know if this is news here or not, but the world doesn't like niggas as a whole. The world <laughs> don't like black people. So yeah. if you're mad at Jewish people for supposedly calling us Goyim, where's that smoke for you know Middle Eastern people calling us a beep? Where's the smoke oh, for yeah, you know yeah, white yeah. people? Uh, you know, you know where it's at. I'm just saying, like, every single group of people has a word to describe black people. Every single one. Asian people, they have words to describe us. Uh, like I said, Middle Eastern people, they have words to describe us. Apparently, I didn't know, uh, what is it called? Goyim? I never heard of that one before. But uh -huh. It's literally just like uh, Gentiles, essentially. Like, the non-Jewish people. Everyone who's not So Jewish. it's not even black people. So what y'all mad about? Yeah, it's not even specifically black people. Yeah, of course not. So what are y'all mad about, then? Right, but that's my whole thing. Like, and then, but look around, right? Like, 
we the only ones who get treated a certain way because it's anti-blackness. We understand how that works, but that's from anyone. That's from everyone. Exactly. So why and my issue is keep for Jewish people specifically. You know why? Like everybody hates us because they anti. Like that's my whole. No, point. no, I know. Why, yeah, but I'm, yeah, I'm that's my whole point. And then even wilder, right? I'm looking at things from 1940, right? After World War II began, uh, it became more difficult for people to emigrate from Europe. You don't say, right? More than 300,000 people, most of them Jewish, were on the waiting list. The State Department almost filled the German quota in 1940. So that's my whole point. You got 300,000 people, most of them Jewish, on a waiting list as the war begins. I'm supposed to believe every Jew who was over there went to America? Every single one? Like, this is my whole point where, like, you niggas are blatantly fucking lying. You're blatantly lying. Like, you're going to tell me there's 250,000 Jewish people in, in its entirety in, in that Central European region or wherever the hell. Nigga. You niggas do, don't know anything. How does this lie even like help y'all cause your case? How does this what information is this substantiating for y'all? I don't which I, I don't get it. I don't get it either. Because Jewish people already are a very small proportion of, of populations anyway. So why even further to make that population even smaller, even tinier, and then try to make their reach and their impact more insidious? That makes no sense to me. So you mean to tell me it's like eight niggas doing y'all like this, and y'all ain't did shit about it yet? It's just eight <laughs> Palpatines taking over the universe. <laughs> yeah, it's just 17 Jewish people doing it to you, niggas. Shit. That's more than had... y'all cause. Yeah, you would have had me thinking it was like a hundred thousand of them niggas out here. Nope. Just five. If this uh, so if Jewish people really are it was only what two hundred and fifty thousand or three hundred thousand, how many? that was the allegation, yeah. If there was only that many, how did this group of people come into power to rule the world like y'all say they do? How y'all let them do that? It's only, it's less of them than it is of us. How they take over. Yeah. And again, I think the problem is, right, is that no one knows the history. Because if y'all look at some of the history and why Jewish folks is in finance to begin with, it's it's hilarious. It's racism. Mm -hmm. They made them do it. Yeah. It's crazy. You you make Jewish people uh, work in the banks and then it becomes a stereotype that they love money and they control the banks and the world government and everything. Like, mm -hmm. you can't make this shit up. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the whole thing. Like, because at a certain point, they were banned from doing a lot of stuff. Right? Like, and then not to mention, there was other points where they said that there were times in history where Christians were banned from doing certain things. Mm -hmm. And so, Juju was just like, well, shit, my book don't say nothing about that. <laughs> my book don't say nothing about that. Y'all want, y'all want, y'all want, y'all can do some business over here, though. Um, and so that's my whole thing. And not to mention there was a there was a, a concept in the Jewish religion. And it's about it's basically like I think it's like charity is what it means, essentially. But mm -hmm. it's sort of like this whole concept that they got of where uh yeah, this is it. I can't pronounce this. Uh T Z E D A K A H. Sadaka. I think that's how you pronounce it. Sadaka. It's a Hebrew word meaning righteousness, but it's commonly used to signify charity, right? So the whole right. point is, right, it's like, you got, uh, the thing with that is, is like, I think ultimately it's jealousy. I'm, I hate to, I hate to be this guy, but I just think ultimately y'all yeah. see how a lot of these Jewish folks, they stay connected no matter what. I might despise the shit out this nigga across the table from me, but I promise I'll never let his kids go hungry. <laughs> I promise. I never do it. I can't stay in this nigga. Literally. But I never do it. I never do it. And don't get wrong, I'm sure there's some that do, but when they do, they niggas will come all together like, nah, you wrong for that. You wrong for that. Meanwhile, shit. Shit. I, I'm not even gonna say it's just black folks, but meanwhile, the rest of niggas is just like that. It's true. Right? Uh, a lot of black people don't have that sense of community. It's it's just sadly true. Yeah. And then there's a the reason like, for it, though. I mean, everything goes back to slavery and mm -hmm. Jim Crow. We mm -hmm. were designed to be pitted against each other get it out the like we don't have a sense of community because we can't sometimes literally yeah and then mind you like even in the Torah they got like something called like the laws of giving to poor people basically it's like eight levels of giving right and so you often says have uh, the lowest level is like giving in sadness or giving out of pity mm -hmm. the highest level is giving an interest-free loan to a person in need forming a partnership with them giving a grant to them finding a job for them so long God, as that damn. yeah right so long as that loan grant partnership or job results in a person no longer living by relying upon others like dog listen to what y'all hearing 
You get what I'm saying? Like, where where does this exist? And I wouldn't even just say just black communities. Where does it exist outside of some sort of text or classical literature that's going to put this all together for y'all? Niggas don't operate by these standards, and that's the problem. Y'all see these niggas operate by these standards, and don't get me wrong, I'm mad, and y'all mad. <laughs> and I do think, I it's that. <laughs> and instead of being the niggas to get, because that's my problem. If it, a nigga like Kanye crying like this when you had a record label with all black people and you pimped every single one of them, you shut up. That's exactly that's you my shut whole up. Point. There's no such thing as black unity, mainly because the government doesn't want that. But once a black person does get on and get some money. Y'all niggas never unite. Like, what? look what happened to fucking, uh, what was it, Versus? Well, Swiss Beats and Timberland sold it to Thriller. Thriller ruined it. Anytime a black nigga gets some money, make it doing something, a product or a service, they sell it to white people. Look at all these black hair care products that are owned by white people. BET got sold to a white person. Niggas just don't fucking have that. It's all about, I'm trying to get out the hood. I need some money. Mm-hmm. That's all it is with everybody. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, Triller agreed to pay them bread and then like a subsequent $1 million every month, da da da. And then Triller didn't pay them niggas. Right? So they had to sue again. So think about this. You build something up for black folks, sold it to these dudes, they promised you a lump sum and then payments every month. They gave you the lump sum and then didn't give you the payments. So it's just like, bro, look at what they do to y'all. Look at what they do to y'all. And then my whole point is, I'm not about to say, I don't care if the guy behind this was Jewish. I'm not about to blame his Judaism for this. It's Nigga, you are a mark. Person. You fell for this. And my whole problem is this is what we do. We don't want to own. We don't want to have nothing. We don't want to keep it. And I under, listen, I'm not even mad at niggas for selling what they sell. Because my whole thing is if you're going to sell this and do what you do, then do what you do. But my whole point is if you're a nigga like Kanye, you got billions. You've been working with these same people you got a problem with. And you know what you could have been doing? A whole lot for the community. whole lot you know for the what community. You was doing? Nothing. Yeah, you know what you was doing? Pimping your artists, making a little school that was trash. And a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, shit. I heard he was making a school called Don after his mom, and then I heard nothing about it. I don't even know what. The, I know no, he the school did. failed after uh, yeah, what happened. Yeah, he had the actual school come up, but like it was just. Like, I know, bro. but what I'm saying is, I don't know. Like, what was they even teaching at the school? Like, I heard oh. more about LeBron school. Oh, you want to hear? Oh, let me tell you. I'm on the website right now. Oh my god, this nigga's ready. Okay, ready shit on Kanye. It was a little school, a little school man. So let's see, Donda in a day. Each day, Donda students learn fundamentals, grow in their faith, and experience two enrichment classes. So, like, this is already, like, a faith-based class. Like, okay. Grow in their faith and experience two enrichment classes. The enrichment classes include world language, visual art, film, choir, and parkour. Okay. Parkour? We don't know. We don't know. Core classes of language arts, math, and science. Full school worship, lunch and recess. Okay. I still don't know nothing about really what y'all do or nothing about the actual stuff here. But then it's just a whole bunch of we are God's reflection of God's glory and, and all this other stuff and, 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 and all these other things. And my whole point is, is again, what are we doing? What are we doing? That's my whole problem. That's ultimately my issue. I'm, I'm sick of us crying and bitching and moaning every time somebody else does something great for their own people. And sometimes at the expense of us. And I'm not, my thing is half of this shit don't be at our expense. We only complain when it's at our expense. And then we try to lump everything together. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? We try to lump, uh, look, they they take care of they niggas and they make sure that they, and they'll do anything. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's crazy, right? You see how they got levels of giving? Giving out of pity was at the bottom, nigga. At the bottom. Nigga, the top one was getting a job for a nigga so he don't got to rely on somebody else. Nigga, right, listen to what they telling you. Another thing, uh, back to my point from before, um, when I was talking about every race has a word for black people, so why were they just mad at Jewish people? Mm -hmm. Middle Eastern people, Asian people, they do the same thing that Jewish people do where they put niggas on. Latino folks do the same thing. They be 12 deep in the house and they all put in. Like, when I was living in Detroit, there was a corner market I used to go to. You know, they had little bodegas in fucking uh, uh, New York. And it's always it's always in the same family. When somebody mm-hmm. gets too old and running, they hand it down to their kids or their grandkids. They keep it in the family. So why are y'all mad exclusively at Jewish people when Middle Eastern people are doing the same thing? Asian people are doing the same thing with a, with the Chinese restaurant. Latino mm-hmm. people are doing the same thing with a Mexican restaurant or Puerto Rican restaurant, Dominican restaurant. It's 
everybody's doing the same thing except us, but you're only mad at one group of people. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, like my 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 whole thing is honestly at this point, I'm a, I'm gonna be real with y'all niggas, and it's probably very dismissive, but I, I'm I'm over this government shit. I'm over y'all blaming the government for this shit. The government did what they did historically and continue to do what they do to this day. Correct. But my nigga, we have billionaires. We got more black rich niggas than any moment in history that has ever existed. And what do we have to show for it? Jay Z might get the commanders, but what do we have to show for it? Hmm. Because that's my problem, right? Remember, Jay-Z was going to sit out. We got a nigga like Jay-Z. What does he do for us? He goes to Marcy and tells a nigga to buy a crypto. Okay. What does Nas do for us? I don't actually know. These niggas might do some little charity, and I'm not nothing wrong with charity. My whole point is, fuck all the charity. Listen to what 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 what, what, what concepts and, and what practices these niggas adhere to. It ain't about charity, nigga. This is consistent. This, this uh, what, what was that shit called? This Sadaka, nigga? This shit don't just go away. This ain't like I do this for a couple years. Ah, yeah, ah, I'm feeling real good. Like this ain't voluntary philanthropy. This is quote a religious obligation that must be performed regardless of one's financial standing, and so is mandatory even for those of limited financial needs. It's considered one of the main three acts that can positively influence an unfavorable heavenly decree. Nigga, if God mad at me, this will get me right. What are we what are we talking about? What are we talking about? And that's the problem. Y'all niggas don't carry that type of energy for nothing. For fucking nothing. We don't carry it for nothing. And, I, and this ain't even just the black people. This is really just an individual American These issue. These Americans. I'll say this is an American thing. It's yeah. me on my own to myself. That's that's what it is right. in America. Right. And so it's not, and plus, trust me, because there's plenty of Jews who's going to step on another Jewish person to get their bag. It's plenty of uh, Latinos who's going to step on another Latino. We see it all the time. Look at Ted Cruz. Shit. Look at Ted Cruz. I right, listen. Look Ted at Cruz. some of these popping. Uh, yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's one of them Latinos or something. Nigga, last name Cruz. Talking about Marco Ruby. Oh well, I mean, yeah. nigga, both of them. It don't matter. <laughs> both of them niggas. I thought they, Ted Cruz was the whitest white. Honestly. Nigga, his last name is Cruz. I right, shit. I don't mean nothing. What's <laughs> it means something. I tell he you probably what. Probably not even something. like Hispanic Latino. He probably Spaniard conquistador <laughs> Spanish. I mean. tell you what though, it means something. But that'd be my whole thing. Perfect example is, look, you know who Leo Cohen is? Yeah. Right? The music dude, right? Leo Cohen mm -hmm. was seen with Kanye, with the MAGA hat on. So even he didn't care about this shit because it was about a bag. It was about a bag. And that's my whole point where y'all really think, like, this, nothing overrides money. Caitlyn Jenner, what, what should she stand for? What does she stand for? And why? It's the bread. It don't matter how high up you go, where you get to, nigga. It's the it's the money. And so ultimately, that's my whole point. Whole shit with hove. What should he stand for? What do he stand for? So that's my whole thing where it's just like, man, listen, man. Honestly, for niggas that's so jealous, if y'all niggas just paid attention and started listening, started looking at what them Jewish folks do, not mad, but just thinking, what can I bring back to my niggas? The eight levels of giving. Bring that back. Sadaka, nigga, bring that back. Bring that back to the game. Because I promise you, you got a room full of niggas who got it, and they 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 are here to Sadaka, nigga, an obligation, regardless of how much bread I got. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get somewhere. We'll get somewhere for sure, right? That. Like that. But till then, yeah, y'all niggas keep complaining and then doing the same thing that the labels is doing to you to other niggas. Because think about every artist-run label. Which ones have been Yo. any good? Which ones have been any good? I would say Rock Nation is probably the best you've gotten, I guess. That's probably the best yeah. you've gotten. But other than that, bro, look at every like these are money laundering schemes. Honestly. You know, it's literally well, it's just maybe, maybe Maybach music. I haven't heard no complaints from them niggas. Maybe well, so. But Meek sound for free. You see what I'm saying? Like, well, actually, you know, who on Maybach music besides uh, hello? Meek is still even making music? Uh, huh. What happened to Gunplay? Better yeah, I'll tell you what. I want to see what the label looks like today. Is the he label does the there. label exist today? Yeah, I was gonna say, is it even still there? It exists, sure. But who's part of it now? Uh let's see. French Montana 2012. Da, da, da. French Montana signed in? That was in 2012. Interesting. Mm, uh yeah, it's in both of whom is so yeah, he signed cozy with the curls and just Britney. 
You hear what I said? I said, I said cozy with the curls and just cozy with the curls and and, and just just Britney. It's just Britney. Who's that singing on stage? Oh, it's just Britney. Yeah, it's just Britney and it's cozy just... with the curls. All right, enough of this. Next time, because there's yeah, no yeah, fucking way, yeah. bro. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like, no it's way. cool though. It's cool though. We gonna keep moving. <laughs> we gonna keep moving. We gonna keep moving. Maybach, uh, just Britney, probably the girl that say Maybach music on before the song. I'm fucking crying. They paid her ten thousand dollars for that. Me no, she's fine like, now. Yeah, I bet that helps. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I seen her in. Uh, what we want? I seen her on tour. You see her on tour? Yo, get out of my face! Yeah. Yeah, tell me what she looked like this. You tell me. <laughs> uh, standard light skin IG baddie. Uh, let me see. Let me see what she looks like. Huh? She's on love and hip hop. Probably on wild now too. She could look similar to some of these. Other... Oh man. Okay, never mind. I ain't gonna say nothing more. Um. So. Oh, I'm looking her up. I was right. Yeah, I told you. I seen her. Yeah, we, yeah. We so we on the topic of music. You want you want to get to the Drake and Twenty One album. You want to talk about some of these ballot initiatives and some of these elections, or or, or what you want to do? We talk about uh, Drake and Twenty One. I didn't listen though. Um. Okay. So yeah. So I didn't hear the entire album. Um. But before I started the album, I heard a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know, shit about the uh, the Meg Thee Stallion lines, the Serena lines. And in listening to the album, I think they're a lot less, they stand out a lot less than people, uh, you know, they they, they stand out a lot less than people said they, like, you know, they, they made it seem like these these were OD. Now, with that being said, um, so I like did the, see... Oh, no, you go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, the Serena line, Drake is just petty. He's always been petty. I didn't really oh, yeah. care about that. He just... He's mad because he was trying to get with Serena, and mm-hmm. so he took shots at her husband. That's all it was. I mean, he didn't say nothing disrespectful about her, so why the fuck do I care? I don't care about Serena's husband. Let the nigga be mad. Um, yeah. If I'm but, him, I just like, yo, suck my dick, white skin nigga. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you're talking about the husband talking to Dre. Okay. Yeah, if I'm him, I just like, oh, is the little light skin nigga mad because I bagged his shorty? Yeah. Um, The Meg thing, I, w- I was a little bit more annoyed at that. And then I saw the video with Little Yachty saying that <clears throat> it wasn't about Meg Thee Stallion because, and then I listened to the song and he said, um, shots, not shot. Um, Bro, I don't care. If, yeah, no, I was getting to that. He said, <laughs> shots, something implying that it was, you know, BBLs, and but you call yourself a stallion, which I don't care. It's, it's a double Aunt Andre. So yeah. niggas, you knew what niggas was gonna hear when they heard yeah. that. You knew what she was doing. You're a grown man. Yeah. Not to mention, um, people. Some people brought up the whole. Oh no, he was probably talking about Elk the Stallion, which is another person. And mind you, I looked up who Elk the Stallion is, and I'm not gonna hold you. This is bar for bar Drake's bag. These are the women Drake's likes. So most likely, I'm willing to even say yes. You're a hundred percent right. He was talking about this woman because she's a she is the type of white woman Drake would love. So absolutely, I think that's hundred percent who he's talking about. But I also think Drake is not stupid, and Drake knew well enough to know that this bar would be interpreted a certain way. That's Simply. why I'm keeping it. Simply. Oh, you want to see what she looked like? Uh, hold on, I got you. I got you. Let me post. It no, I, I can look it up myself. I just wanted. No, no, I, got you, I just man. wanted it to be on air. Did I actually send a link to? Yo, it's crazy. I've seen her before. Like this is. You tell me if this is Drake's bag or not. Like this is Drake's bag. That's literally his baby mama, but her ass bigger. Yeah. So don't get me wrong. Like now, once I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, this is a hundred percent who he was talking about. However, he knew this was a double entendre and it would be interpreted a certain way. So he just let went with it anyway. Mm-hmm. Anything for the clicks, for the attention, and it worked. And that's why I'm just like, bro, do y'all know how double entendres work? They're double. I double now it's Aunt Andres, sir. <laughs> like, do y'all honestly know? Um, and so, yeah, like, that's the whole thing where I'm just like, all right, man, anyway, you got that. Um, but even beyond that, I mean, the Serena thing I thought was corny only because it's like Drake. 
you are not allowed to say any other man is a groupie. You're not allowed to say that. Yeah, not you. No, that's hilarious. I, not you. I, we have. Did you see that video of every single interaction he's had with a uh, sports player where he's looking like the groupie? I, I mean, yeah. He had a compilation yes. of every single time. I didn't see a video, but I saw like four pictures of that, and I remember most of them. So I'm like, yeah. I was like, yeah, the Marcus Cousin ones, I remember that. The LeBron ones, I remember those. Even the one where he's, the he's ones, I remember screaming, those. screaming, yelling, hollering in Rihanna's face because he want to fuck bad as hell. That one, like, think about how many memes there are of Drake just being with somebody and looking like a groupie. Mm-hmm. You, you have got to stop. You are not allowed to speak on who is a groupie. Saying a nigga, somebody husband of all people is a groupie when you was trying to bag the same woman. You nasty nigga. First off, of course I'm a groupie in my life. You yeah, that's my wife. Like uh, goofy ass. Now, you wouldn't know about that because you're not married, sucker. Lame ass nigga. Yeah, go marry that porn star. He was hiding oh. your son from the world. Mm-hmm. Couldn't even marry her, mind you. But that's the whole part. This is what Pusha T was getting at. Like, yeah, nigga, your, your wife ain't. Even, I mean, not your wife. Your mother ain't even had marriage. That's crazy, huh? You wouldn't know yeah. nothing about that. Huh? Oh man. Oh man. This is bro. Go look people. at a. Go look at a bar for bar breakdown. Of what Pusha was saying, bro. Like, it's a reason why Drake really wanted to take it beyond rap. Like, mm-hmm. no bullshit. Like, it's it's. It, he knew he couldn't say nothing back. Because <laughs> it's like, bro, you not. Won. You're not not even that. You're not even supposed to talk to a nigga after he say the shit Push said. You're supposed to do something. Like it's not about talking no more. Like, like the the time for for a combo was over once you start talking about my mama. Damn, your mother ain't even seen marriage. No wonder why you can't get married. You like That's what? The same to say, yeah. I that would definitely, insane, I right? would definitely try to murder a nigga. He for said, sure. How how you keep how you keep getting number ones and she keep coming in last place? And I was like, oh man, listen, brother, mm-hmm. listen, brother. Yeah, you gonna have to, you might have to shoot at him. <laughs> you, you might have to shoot at him. I don't. I get the feeling like talking to him ain't gonna work. So yeah, no, it was just corny. But you me on that. Um, the album itself was good. I saw the reviews on it. I got a lot of bad reviews. Um. And I think my Drake's bars were good. Uh, but my issue with this was just one, it was really a lot of it was a couple of petty, just I'm gonna take a shot at somebody who's beneath me. And I say beneath you as in like not like human beneath you, but like somebody who's just not as popping as you and you know what yeah, you're exactly. doing. Like nigga took a shot at Drum after stealing his song. You're insane, bro. Something's yeah, that's wrong. fucking crazy to do. Nigga, you're punching down. Yeah, you're punching down on a nigga you literally stole from. That's crazy, bro. Like, that is crazy, say. One. And then two, my big issue was just like, 21 was just, again, somebody put it to bed. He was a passenger on this shit. Nigga just in the side. He just in the seat. He was just there for ad libs. He was there just, just for something. And I think, not only that, but I think that chemistry wasn't, not even chemistry, it was like, there was points where Drake was rapping on some of these songs, and I was just like, my nigga, like, you can you not even setting 21 up. You get what I'm saying? Like, you kind of like your verse is done, and then you just hey, 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 oh, oh, hey, 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 uh, yeah, oh, and then 21 just gotta come on after you do that for eight seconds. Like, and it's just like, bro, you're not even setting him up. You're not gonna give him nothing hard to leave on so he can come in strong right after. Cause think about it. If you finish your verse with some hard shit, and then 21 come on right after that with some hard shit, it's gonna sound hard. But then if you finish your verse with just four bars of me, hey, uh, 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 do your thing, 21. Do your, like, do come your on, bro. Like, you're not even trying to set me up forever. 21, can you do something? <laughs> oh, man. Like, it's just like, what are you fucking doing? What are you, you doing? Want, I want to do something for him, you know? Something strange for a little piece of change, maybe? Per mayhaps? Yeah, like, um, but yeah, nah, even, uh, Even the Ice Spice thing, mind you, especially after spending all the time you did with Ice Spice, with the whole she a ten trying to rap is good on mute. I'm like, bro, you are you are slurping this woman up to get near her. Yeah, I was gonna say, wasn't he in her DMs? Uh, hey, yo, I'm I'm like, yo, I don't, it's so sad, bro. What type of nigga you are? Yo? <laughs> you are. I've been saying this for the longest time. Drake is just a lame ass nigga. He just no, puts out. No, like we, he's we, a cornball. Cause he's always put out just like the mind you listen to the lyrics on any of them songs that like go back and really listen to the lyrics on half of these songs like that nigga is bitching mm-hmm. like crying nigga like just straight up crying like listen to Marvin's room was just straight up crying listen to hotline bling listen to the real lyrics of hotline bling nigga 
he's just sick that he left town for months, came back, and shorty li- went on with her life. Yeah, like, literally. You started wearing less and going out more? Oh, shit. I don't even hang in with some girls i never seen before. I can't even use your friends to get to you no more, yo. You change. <laughs> you change. Really just rap about whole nigga shit, honestly. Just... Quiet so, as um, I mean, so so the bars are cool on here. I just think there's a lot of other shit where it's just like, don't do this, don't do this, because now it's like it does take away from the album a little bit. Like, and I just don't know why y'all doing this. It's no reason for y'all both talented. It's no reason for neither of y'all to be doing it. And Twenty One's not even doing it. In fact, it's just you. But he's yeah. unfortunately here with your ass. So, and it's just like, man, nah, nah. Drake is yeah, Drake is. I'll tell you what. I wouldn't say Drake is washed, but what I will say is. Do you remember this? I feel like Future kind of got on his run as well, where you could tell Future was kind of starting to die off a little bit. And so he mm-hmm. started finding the new and hot and popping nigga to get on with, do some to songs with, and, and to keep yeah. it going, to extend the shelf life, right? And I've been seeing that from Future for years. For like, I would argue the last four or five years I've seen that from him. Like, because think about it. Really think about from what a time to be alive. Right, DS2 came out, boom. Right, then what a time to be alive. Yeah, that was the whole Drake joint, where he got in the studio with Drake, and then what came after that? Purple Rain. Yeah, Purple Rain was tough. Yeah, yeah Evil. Sure. Uh, okay. I, it was all right. shaky, but it's still there. It's it was still, right. He still yeah. got it. It was alright, right? Okay. Then you go straight from that to Future, and then Hendrix. Those two were stupid bangers, crazy, Absolutely. right? Everything. But that was your heat. heat. So then you got to re-up. He went to Super Slimy right after that. Then yeah. he went to World on Drugs. Yeah. Okay. All right, all right. Then you went to Wizard, which uh, it was a good album. Was I'm, I'm going to give him Wizard. I'm going I'm to give him I'm going to give him that, right, right. But then you went to uh, an EP with Save Me. None of those songs on there really was that good like that. Um, please tell me. Yeah, please tell me it was about it. Right, uh, government official was good. That's uh, girls. Yeah, government official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a square, square. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> then there was high off of life, which was a little. Uh, was a you little can rough. you can be honest with that one. It's just yeah. It was mid, and then Pluto, baby Pluto. You see, like it's like yeah. oh okay, okay. I never liked you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like I really feel like that's what it is, man. Like I just. Well, I mean, it, his last one was fire. Fire? He has some fire songs in there for sure. But I never liked you. Yeah, yeah I never. Uh, well, I, although I think that's these are the bags that these niggas exist in. The problem is you just can't. I can't give you that year after year. I gotta find other, and I think that's the problem. Future's having trouble with the other things. And he can mm-hmm. easily get into the toxic. I do my own do 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 this. Like I'm not even like you know he can good in that because that's just who he is. I don't have to try that hard or do nothing extra. Nigga. I'm just being myself, but. When you make me, oh, okay. Uh, ah, let me try this. Let me try this. Uh, let me try to relate to them. <laughs> let me get Uzi to relate to the younger generation. Yeah, and then mind you, Uzi charged him up, and then even now you'll see like he's got features with a couple of other artists, and now he'll do features with artists where he'll do two or three features with an artist in a short span of time because it's that certain energy he get. Like real Boston Richie, he got two or three songs with him. You probably never heard of this nigga. But Future acting different with him, ain't he? Yeah, but Future got three songs, and he's sliding on every single one. I believe it, yeah. So it's, it's like, like yeah, this okay. nigga is absorbing these yeah. niggas' rap energy yeah. like the fucking Monstars and Looney Tunes. <laughs> he's yeah. absorbing the energy through the mic. <laughs> Literally. So, um, yeah, man. Uh-uh. That remains to be seen. Um, But what else we got? We got uh, we got ballot initiatives, or we could finish this off with some, uh, some NFL talk, or fantasy talk, I guess. What you want to do, man? Some yeah, we did. We didn't really do too much. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, um, we could do that. We didn't really finish. Yeah, so we could do that. Um. All right. So boom. Did you? Let me see. Let me pull my joint up. Uh. You want to see me through my dance? But yeah, we talked about your team this week. Uh, you should be all right. I think Curtis Samuel. Uh, is there? Oh, Tyler Boyd's not playing. Yeah, Tyler Boyd's not playing. Um, I was thinking about Adam Thalene, but yeah, but he's Adam Thalene and. I'm not even thinking about the question, but just points wise, if you look at Adam Thalene and Curtis Samuels, Curtis Samuels has been putting up better numbers than Adam Thalene this season. Like every time I mention Curtis Samuels, you and Reef are like, 
Yeah, I don't know, but y'all don't even see the numbers. I've been seeing. Yeah, I bulk at that shit every time. Meanwhile, I'm looking at 20, 15, 17, 16, 10, 16, 26, 25. Yeah. Yeah, every time I mention Curtis Sanders, y'all like, why? There ain't no way I'll play Curtis Sanders. But look at these niggas' numbers. I'm going to keep doing it, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you deserve You should keep doing it. I swear to God, I'm going to keep doing this shit. <laughs> you 100% should keep doing it, but I'm going to keep asking because this nigga keeps putting up these questionable numbers. And I'm going to keep regretting not putting them in eventually. I mean, him. is this, this real? <laughs> every time I see this nigga on the bench, 25. Hello? And then I look <laughs> at the game, Washington is losing. How? How do you have more than Terry McLaurin? And y'all losing. Yeah, what are you doing? Terry McLaurin not getting the rock? I don't know. Some confusing things going on. Um, and then Gibson's been going crazy this year, too. Yeah. Which, he's their RB1, so I expect it, but... Well, even that's stuck, so because yeah, exactly. <clears throat> they had Brian Robinson as their RB one for like two games, and they were just like, "Uh, oh wait, no, Antonio Gibson's nice, right?" We're gonna go back to who we already had. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So as for this week, I feel like I should be good. Um, I don't have any like tough, tough matchups this week. Thank God. Um. The guy I'm playing has Lamar Jackson, but he's on bye this week. So, Ooh, you dodged a bullet. Definitely dodged a bullet with that one. He has Waller, who's been out forever, so I ain't worried about that. Oh, yeah, you're um, good this week. You might have an automatic dub. He's got Metcalf at Tampa Bay. Uh, We'll see. Chris Godwin, Seattle. We'll see. Dalvin Cook. Uh, he'll probably go crazy. Dalvin uh, Cook's been uh, very disappointing this season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's still been, like, a top – you know, like a top 10 running back. So it's not like he's been terrible, but like, yeah, niggas probably took him first round. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Tony Pollard, who's doing well, who's doing well. He could, uh, especially Green Bay looks bad. Tony Pollard could run all over these niggas. So a little worried about that. Aaron Jones versus Dallas. Um, I think Aaron Jones is dealing with an injury. So that could, you know, he may not play. Uh, then at the, after that, I mean, I'm just, I'm not worried about the rest of these niggas like Kirk Cousins, Evan Ingram, you know. Cousins like, is a – he's going to give you 20 probably, you know, average quarterback numbers. He's not going to put up 35. He'll give you a solid 19. Yeah. yeah. you a solid 18. Respect um, but mind you, I got Waddle versus Cleveland. I got Cooper Cup versus Arizona. I got Kenneth Walker at Tampa Bay, which could be tough. I think that might be the matchup that's going to cook me. I got Jamal Williams at Chicago, which should be good. Uh, Pat Fryermuth is back, and they just traded um, Chase Claypool, so he should get some more targets as well. Gabriel yeah. Davis, I need this nigga to wake up, brother. It's like Gabe, the only time this nigga goes off is when he's getting thrown touchdowns. The only time like, he, he goes off he's is not when he's running. on my bench. Fucking <laughs> hilarious to think about, bro. I Sorry. played him two weeks in a row, 6.5, 6.3. I sat on the last time. He had 19. I I don't know what's going on with Gabe Davis. I don't know how Actually, many. Actually, no, I, I, I got the 19 from him. I sat him for the 35. Yeah, I remember when he dropped the 35. I looked at your team and saw he was on the bench, and I was crying for you. Yeah. Now, Lazard, mind you, is putting up good numbers. He had 22, 15, and 20 in his last three games. He don't got no so, choice but to put up good numbers. Who else is going to be playing? Yeah. Yeah, but his shoulder is fucked up, so he might also be out. Um, Are you going against Lazard? No, I have Lazard. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I have Lazard. Lazard was a good pick. Like, he hasn't done shit in the last three years, but this year, after Devontae got traded and Valdez Scanlon, you were smart to pick up. Lazard, because I mean, who the fuck else is gonna get the ball? Mm-hmm. I just caught him. I caught him, uh, you know, for the low low. But Wait, did you thing. draft him or did you pick no, him up no, off no, the waiver no. wires? I got him off the waiver wire. Oh, that's oh, that was a steal, literally. You got mm-hmm. you got him for nothing. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't draft him. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I'm looking at receivers. There's eh, there's a few, but it ain't much. Um, but yeah, no, I should be good this week. Uh, even your matchup, I feel like you ought to be good this week. I I'm like just really looking just... at the names that he has, and the names he has are scary. But none of them niggas, James Conner is not doing shit. Devontae Adams, it's he could. He's put up thirty this season a couple times, but usually he's not. Uh, he also has fucking. Let's see, let me pull it up. See who else he has, because he had a list of names, and I was like, oh, shiver me timbers. That's scary. Here. Yeah. 
Yeah, because Devontae, with all the rest of them niggas out, he could go nuclear this week, or the Raiders could just continue to look like shit because that's, that's what, what they I'm do. Thinking it's gonna be, they're just gonna be super stinky. Uh, but yeah, no, nah, I mean, I ain't gonna hold you. This is that is a tough matchup for you. You and Reef both got tough matchups this week. And... Reef is playing. Reef is playing Mariota, AJ Brown, Amari uh, Cooper, Eckler, Chubb, Chris Olave. This guy's got Josh that... Jacobs on the bench. Holy shit. How is that one team? How does he have all these niggas? Well, he drafted those two backs back to back, um, which I understood because, you know, niggas were taking like PPR backs and stuff like that. And uh, well, he drafted Eckler first, obviously. Yeah. And then uh, niggas let Nick Chubb slot. And that was the, the real mistake, honestly. I don't know how niggas let Nick Chubb slot. I feel like I, know, I, I know how. Tired, I, mean, I would have gotten him. I think. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. First off, if I was higher. I also would have gotten him. But. Um, you do what you gotta do, man. I mean, that's why I drafted Joe Mixon this year. I did not believe Joe Mixon would be the dude, but at the place I was, at where my number, like my first round pick, I had to take Cooper Cup because I didn't have enough. Uh, there wasn't a good enough choice where I was like, "What am I gonna take, Stephon Diggs?" Like, no disrespect, I mean, I'm taking Cooper Cup. Like, yeah, Cooper Cup. I mean, is same thing happened to me when we were going through the running backs. I I chose Alvin Kamara because the niggas that I wanted were gone, and there's. Like, when I'm looking at a team, I want my RB1 to be a superstar. At least a star. Something. Yeah. So, like, who was left in, like, I think I was fifth or sixth. And so, obviously, fucking Christian McCaffrey was gone. Josh Jacobs was gone. Like, anybody you could think of that's going to give you 25 to 30 regularly was gone. So. Yeah, at that point. Yeah, it was cooked. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see. Can I look at the draft? I sure can. Yeah, yeah. I drafted Joe Mixon in the second round. Um, let me see. Jonathan Taylor went first. Oh, that's 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 that hurts. That that's hurts. tough for whoever. Got, I'm sorry, whoever had him. I'm sorry. Yeah. So when you drafted Alvin Kamara, like I think you just wanted a back because I mean Justin Jefferson was still there, Stephon Diggs, Devontae. Yeah, but no, I can I understand had, why I'm you would take Alvin Kamara over those niggas. Like, yeah. And, and then, look, I got. I still got Tyreek after I got fucking. Uh, after I got Alvin Kamara, so it ended up working out. The funny thing is, I was hell bent on getting Jamar Chase, and if had my brother not drafted Jamar Chase, the pick before me, I would have had Jamar Chase. And you know, um, it's funny. I was gonna draft um Darren Waller. Woo-wee. I was gonna draft him, and uh, thankfully, somebody got him literally the pick before me in the same round. Yeah, Nick Chubb slid to the second round. I could have took him over Joe Mixon, but Joe Mixon's top ten, and Nick Chubb is. 16 right now. Well, that's also because Joe Mixon had a 70 crazy. point game. You know, yeah, come on now. Like, it's yeah, like, that's not fair. technically, Nick Chubb is still winning. Like, but, but yeah, no. Nah. And then, um, and then third round, uh, literally everyone's third round picks sucked. <laughs> I'm looking at it. Well, I'm talking, uh, Keenan Allen. I mean, granted, uh, the glass cannon, Darren Waller, uh, Javante Williams, which is a great pick, but he gets injured. David Montgomery. Uh, Cortland Sutton. Uh, the only Who good pick here. You picked uh, da, 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 Kittle, which I think was a yeah, reach. But... Well, because I was, I wanted a good tight end like Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, yeah, I see what you're But he took Zeke in the fourth. Yeah, I mean, I understand why because he got to round four. That was that was not a high buy-in for Zeke at round four, but yeah. And when I'm looking at the backs, there really wasn't much. Left. Exactly. So, like, y'all was talking about me picking Zeke, but, like, who else was I going to pick in the fourth round when I was trying to get an RB2, a Brother, reliable RB2? I'm looking at who's left at these backs. You did not have a choice. Yeah. You would have you would have reached for somebody. That's the only thing you could have done at that point was just reach. and just Or just said, ah, fuck it. Instead of a back, I'll just get another receiver or I'll get a quarterback. I'll get Lamar Jackson or something. And then just dealt with having an RB3 or RB4 as my RB2. Yeah, well, one thing I have realized is that it depends on the players, right? Because certain players, like, I'm willing, like, all right, I'll reach for you because worst case scenario, if I have to find a gap for running back, I'll find a gap. Yeah. And it just requires a bit more work from you on a week-to-week basis. But, like, sometimes, depending on how the drafts go, you just kind of know that's what you're going to have to do. Like, because I've had drafts where it's just like, all right, the receivers left are not good. So I know what's going to have to happen. I'm better off just drafting the best backs, having two stop, sturdy backs, mm-hmm. having the one wide receiver two who can be a wide receiver th- one sometimes, 
and then figuring out who the other receiver is. Like, because again, you'll be the guy like, nah, I need two receivers. So you force a receiver and you take Cortland Sutton. Perfect example, right? You take one yeah. of those guys thinking like, well, he has to be it because he's the number one target on a, yeah, yeah, until that's not what I mean, happens yet. Nobody's getting targeted. Yeah. And then now you're in a position to where you wasted that pick on Cortland Sutton when Jalen Waddle was still on the board or when like some good backs were still on the board. You made me feel like I could have had an even better wide receiver too <laughs> instead of Zeke, honestly. Because I mean, Zeke, to, yeah, you really uh, there was. I've much. been Zeke this season. I've been bouncing between Zeke and Devin Singletary. So like, I realistically could have held off on Zeke and got another wide receiver too. Who did, I picked? Ty, uh, Tyreek Hill first, and then I picked uh, Marquise Brown. So like, those were two great picks for wide receivers, especially with um with D Hop being out. You picked Kamara, right. Tyreek Hill, and then uh Kittle, and then Zeke. But when I'm looking at the backs that went after Zeke, it was like, again, I just would not have expected anybody to reach for these backs. Like, it was like mm-hmm. Brees Hall for the Jets, who went crazy until he yeah, tore. Yeah. Whatever he tore. Uh, Chase Edmonds, who has done damn near nothing. Yeah. Uh, Josh Jacobs. Like, you just, no, no one would have yeah. reached. Oh, him. man. Josh Jacobs this Josh year. Josh Jacobs man. is fantasy 17. He's total <sighs> rank 17. But you just wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done it either. Yeah, exactly. Travis Damn. Etienne was there, but mind you, I would not have done that either. Because Travis Etienne, I understand what they was going to do with him, but I didn't think that they was going to trade away James Robinson to clear up everything for him. Yeah, I thought they was going to be sharing space, something, right? So, like, my whole thing is the only thing you can, you ended up drafting uh, Adam Thaleen. But when I even look at the receivers that was left, like, the only other option, you could have got Wait, I drafted Adam Thaleen before Hollywood Brown? In the fifth round, yeah, yeah. No, so nobody else picked up Hollywood? Wow. That's. Interesting. He, uh, uh, you drafted Hollywood Brown in the ninth round. That's fucking what? <laughs> oh my god! I think you gotta understand though. Like niggas didn't trust him. He's one of those players. Like if you play fantasy or you've been betting or whatever, like you just don't trust some of these guys. And that's kind of where Joe Mixon fell for me. Like mind you, I took Joe Mixon in the second round because I was just like, I don't trust Saquon enough. I just don't know how that's gonna work out. Aaron Jones could have been a solid pickup, but I was just like, mm. Could have been, but you made a good decision not to this year. Damn. Yeah. Now, mind you, Nick Chubb probably should have been the guy I got. Like, that would have been the only other guy I would have felt good enough picking him or Travis Kelsey, because I've had Travis Kelsey yeah. on my team a bunch of times. That nigga's a demon. But those are the only two niggas I would have been safe. I would have felt any better picking. Like, I would not have – I just simply wouldn't have chosen – Saquon over Joe Mixon. I wouldn't have chosen Aaron Jones over Joe Mixon. I, mind you, and I'm not even a huge Joe Mixon nigga like that. But I had him two, I think it was two years ago, and he was not the guy. He was not, or maybe it was three years ago. I don't remember. Whenever I had him, though, he was a little iffy that year. And I was like, oh, brother, here we go, Joe. But, yeah, no, nah, I mean, that's the thing. You play fantasy enough, and you'll really start to, you really get into that like like that groove of picking what's on the board because all of it sounds good when you do your little mock drafts and you're like this is the team I want and this is the composition of a team I should have and then you get halfway through the season and you're like damn I got six receivers and you have yeah. six receivers because your two backs are never changing you get what I'm saying like you got yeah, two no, backs the way this league has been going for me has been truly this is one of my best years uh, luck wise like I got. I drafted – I didn't draft Tyler Boyd. I picked him up um, in week one, and then I dropped him because somebody was on by. It was a uh, – who was on by? It was week either – Probably nobody on by, but it was no, – like, no, 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 no. No, I'm saying I got him in week one. Oh, and gotcha, then, gotcha. And then, like, week – I think it was George Kittle was injured, and uh, Tyler Higby was on by. So I needed uh, a tight end. So I got rid of Tyler Boyd so that I could pick up a tight end just for that week. I went back to get Tyler Boyd after the, that week was over, and Reef picked him up. So I was pissed about that. And then lo and behold, Reef dropped him. I picked him up, and then he started going crazy after that. Yeah, and then uh, Jamar Chase just happens to go down with a hip issue for four yeah, weeks. Yeah, and then, yeah, so th- me getting uh, Boyd this year was just beautiful. It was perfect. Yeah. I mind you, I even think about my brother having nigga had uh, hold on who, who did he he had like the entire fucking Bengals offense and it worked for several weeks. Yeah, <laughs> he had fucking uh hit 
he had fucking Higgins and fucking the uh he had Higgins, Jamar, Jamar Chase, Chase, and he had the tight end. And I was like, yo, you are a sick guy. You are a sick man. And it was working somehow. And it was working. It was working. Like, so that's the thing. Like, I always realize with fantasy, it's like you gotta take what's given to you. Like, and, and not to mention that in the waiver wire shoot is what's gonna save you. Like Mm-hmm. A draft, you can draft a great team on paper, and all it takes is somebody to snap one thing, and then it's over. Then it's over. Like my whole thing, and some of it is luck. Nigga, you know how lucky I am to have Cooper Cup never go down yet. Knock on wood. Like that's all it would take. That is all Man, it would me take. Tariq Hill, it's it's over for me. Like I look at my back, like right now, nigga, I have five running backs in my roster. And you know it's funny, I never have to roster more than three receivers. Because I have Cooper Cup and Jalen Waddle every fucking week. So realistically, uh, I I kind of just need like one backup guy and then maybe another guy who I, I'm going to hold in case I have a bye week or something coming up. But like, I don't have to ever look at receivers. Like ever. I got a bye next week for Jalen Waddle. And I got a, oh shit, the bye is already done for Cooper Cup. So Cooper Cup, ain't, he, he ain't sitting out no more. See, it's the opposite for me. I have fucking... um. I'm good on running backs. I got Alvin Kamara. He's always going to be in. But my my go-to wide receiver is Tyreek Hill. After that, it's a toss-up of who I'm put in. Tyler yeah. Lockett, uh, Curtis Samuels, Tyreek, uh, not Tyreek, uh, Tyler Boyd, mm-hmm. and Adam Thaleen. Yeah. And I had Hollywood Brown for, like, the first six weeks. Yeah. So, like, so you, I never knew who to put in. You got a wide receiver one, a running back one, and then the rest is like, huh? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just go out there and do some shit. We'll see. And so, but sometimes that's exactly how it happens too. Like, like, and the thing is, like, again, you could have reached for another guy that you thought was a wide receiver one, but then the problem is you're reaching. And if mm-hmm. you reach too bad, and then now you, because think about it, say you reach in this round, and then that tight end you were looking at is off the board. So now you can't get him next round. Or now you reach this round, and now you got to pick a quarterback a little faster because the quarterbacks is going. So it's like, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that happens that factors in, and it's just like, I don't know, man. Like, some people, you know, everybody has their own strategies. Like, I remember, you know, some people just, because I've had people do that whole shit. They just like, bro, go get it back. Why are you not getting a running back? I'm like, bro, stop it. Stop it. Don't tell me how to pick my team. Stop it. Stop it. I feel like I was blessed this year with quarterbacks. I got two really good quarterbacks. I got two amazing quarterbacks. Um, And some people don't have any. It's crazy. I do have, um... I've got the you know the, the predator stashed. I don't feel good about it, but what did you get? Didn't somebody else have him at one point? They did. They let him go. You know, he's he's. <laughs> <stashed>. <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny. He's, I've he's got a, um, I've got fucking uh the war zone warrior himself, Kyler Murray, <laughs> <laughs> and I got a uh, tug of violin. Tug of violin. All right, yo. y'all won. So I got two of me, and then it it's just a good combo whenever I put Tua and Tyreek in the same game, because if one goes off, the other one is going off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful say, if working. one goes off, like, one of them isn't leading the league and receiving. <laughs> Yo, Tyreek Hill is fantasy one. I didn't realize that. I think he just got that last week, because I think I checked, and Cooper Cup had him at one game at one yeah, point. Yeah, Cooper Cup's three. So he they close. They for sure Ooh. close. I wonder who two is. Tyreek is won by 12 points over Cooper Cup. I wonder who two is. It's actually it's probably Nick Chubb. Go find him. It's Nick Chubb. I guarantee Probably, you. yeah. I don't see who else it could be. Nick Chubb is 16. I lied. 16? Who is? I wish there was a way to look up, like, who's in the top standard. Joe Mixon's 10. Who the fuck is it? Alvin Kamara's 36. How is Alvin Kamara 36 when he put up Oh, remember, because 49 one week. Of, he had a bunch of useless games. Oh, yeah, I see 9, 0, 10, 0, 31, 22, yeah. 23, 49. From 30, yeah, from that 31 <laughs> forward, nigga. <laughs> oh, yeah, I started off rough in the beginning of the season. Alvin Kamara wasn't doing shit for me. I was just bouncing back and forth between Alvin Kamara, Zeke, and uh, Devin Singletary. Yeah, hold on. Let me see the fantasy player rankings. I mean, obviously, I know we got different rules in our league, so they probably won't. Um, oh, Jalen Hurts. I didn't think about that. Jalen Hurts is number two? He might be. He might be. Uh, Jalen Hurts is seven. Okay. He's seven. Two is two. Diggs is six. 
Hmm. Who is too? No, no, I'm very fucking curious. Pat Mahomes, maybe? Maybe. That's a good, yeah. Probably Pat Mahomes, I would assume. They've got the number one offense, right? He's eight. Who? Who the fuck is number two? It's going to be somebody wild that we didn't think of. It's going to be someone silly. Tua is 52. I don't know why I checked Tua. I'm silly. He was out for like four games. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why I checked. Knowing damn well it wouldn't be Tua. I mean, um, it could be if he was playing all season. Oh, is it Eckler? It's probably Eckler. I can see that. It's got to be Eckler. I'm not, yeah, I'm almost positive. Eckler's four. What the fuck? Who is two, yo? <laughs> Who is two, yo? This shit is getting me tight, yo. Eckler is four, which is nuts. But he who could Goddard. be two? He said, <laughs> Geno Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Breeze Geno, Hall. Geno Smith is top 25, which is very scary. Uh, AJ Brown? He's been going off with the Eagles. Um, I want to say he's probably like top 15, but I can't believe he's that high. Yeah, he's 24. Um, what could it be? It's not Saquon. It wouldn't be Derrick Henry, would it? Oh! Uh, Derrick Henry's 12. Bro, this is going to eat me up. We need to figure this out because it's going to yeah, fucking... No, it's going to no, eat me up. We do. We really do. Kenneth Walker. I don't think... I don't think that looks like... Who could it be, yo? I just need a total rank. Please just give me a total rank. PPR, not for the week, nigga. Just for everything. Fuck. PPR fantasy rankings, please. That's what Jefferson is, 14? Damn. They keep giving me for week 10, you fucking dickhead. Uh, What is this? Is this pre? When was this? I don't know when this was. This is from September. Oh, brother, you guys are fucking useless. Are y'all not keeping up? Oh, it's Josh Allen. Duh. Uh, Josh Allen. I can one thousand percent see that. Two, yeah, okay. Plus, he had two rushing touchdowns last week. I can see that. Yeah, 37, 30, 31, 29, 38, 30, 22, 33. Yeah, he had thirty three in a game where he threw two picks. That's disgusting. Yeah, nigga, if he didn't throw the picks, he would have had like forty eight probably. Nah, I think it's two points per pick. So he would have had thirty seven without. Oh, the it's, picks? it's only two per pick. Yeah, it's only is that two. our league or is that standard rules? Pretty sure it's standard. Good, because I mean, imagine having a quarterback that loves throwing picks, nigga. You would be ass out. Imagine that you Give more than two points. Hey, you you getting fifteen every game? He got four hundred <laughs> yards, three touchdowns. <laughs> you get fifteen still because <laughs> you got a fumble and two picks. <laughs> that shit had to be so infuriating, yo. You see Jameis, you just like, yo, he going crazy. You look at your team, that nigga got thirteen. <laughs> I would kill myself probably at some point. All right, man. I think it's about time we get up out of here, man. I got some bets I got to play. So I got some more bets I need to win. You know what I mean? Your boy the feeling only good. bets I put in on this game are like $0.05, cent, $0.25, cent, bro. I'm not putting real money on this game. Bro, listen, man. When I tell you I hit all three of my Atlanta. bets yesterday. Oh, so you're thinking it don't matter if the team's ass. Just you you in the grip now. You, you Your hand is hot. No, it's literally like I I got on this Discord. When I tell you, it's it's. Did you pay again on the Discord? Yeah, it's only twenty dollars a month. Nigga, I won one ninety last night. That is eight months paid no, for I'm right there. I All was right. thinking about getting in one of them Discords. And I see. Um, he sent me a link to the one that you're in. Um, because yeah. I want to make sure I get into a real reputable one, not a scam yeah. one. Yeah, and that's that's the other thing. Like, because I remember there was a point in time where I was following some people and there were just all these weird things happening. And I was like, uh, I don't know about yeah. this one. I've seen $50 ones and I was just like, I don't know. Meanwhile, this guy is like, he's literally a data analyst. And so he'll give you the breakdowns for why he picked the niggas on which pet. And then he'll even tell you sometimes, like, hey, listen, bro, uh, I got a little freaky with this one. So just water it down. Water it down. Yeah, water this one down. Yeah, because I was bugging when I made this one, but I, I was in my bag. That's fine. I saw a one fifty dollar one, and I looked at the dude, and he be posting his wins. He's verified on Twitter with like a million followers, so like I, I guess he I feel like at a million. Me. I just don't know how reputable you gonna be because this is about a bag at that point, and it's always about a bag. Like, not don't get it twisted, but when you get that high up, I get a little scared because it's like. Are you really still? Do you really give a fuck still? Like, why would you? Because 
win, lose, or draw, you nigga, you getting fifty dollars a month regardless. from say six thousand people, nigga, you good. That's you true. Good. That is uh, true. I posted the dude's Twitter account in uh in the Discord. All right. Um, but yeah, his is twenty. And my thing is, I always tell people when it comes to betting, like you don't follow the wins, you gotta follow the analysis. Mm-hmm. Like the the analysis and the wins usually come together. Sometimes they're a little divorced, but if you just follow the wins, bro, you're gonna get got. Because that's again, it's just it's every just, week is different. Right, exactly. Because this particular guy, like he even he was saying, like, mind you, I won all three bets last night. He was saying, like, damn, we ain't had a night like this in a minute. Like, we ain't but had you actually get to talk to the guy. He's not just posting like this is my team this oh, no, week. he be in the discord with niggas yeah, yeah. Oh, okay i there. thought niggas was just all right here's my team this week y'all go put this bets in hope y'all win nah so he nah. actually conversing with niggas and giving ideas and he'll even yeah. explain his like because like niggas will ask like well what you think about someone so he said ah i liked it but i didn't like it enough to put it on my sheet because da 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 do 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 but like if you want to play it like i would suggest playing maybe like a someone so line or like this type of thing Cause I saw that and that was there, but it, I just wasn't confident enough to put it on my sheet. Yeah, I like, like that. Yeah, all right, yeah. Like that. I'm trying to see what like that, talking to you, giving you ideas. Like <laughs> see, I be liking the way these niggas talking, yo, yo. No homo, I ain't trying to dick ride or nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to dick ride, but nigga, give me bread. I'll dick ride a little bit. Mm-hmm. Cheers. But yeah, not nah, and it's just a good analysis. And he posts uh. I don't know if he posts every play that he makes for free because he still posts free plays. So it's mm-hmm. not like you technically don't have to pay. It's just if you want every play, like, because there was uh, the NBA night, he posted four plays. I think he might have posted one or two to Twitter. And the one he posted to Twitter still won. So, like, oh, yeah, matter. it's just a toss up. Like, if you want to really 100% guarantee that you could win some money off it, that's funny saying really 100% guarantee that you could win. <laughs> but, Later. No, and there's no 100% guarantee at all, yeah. But you got a better chance if you join the Discord and, you know, see exactly what the nigga got going on. Yeah. And the funniest thing is I literally took his analysis on one of his lottery plays. That was one of the ones I hit last night, the one for $70. Like, mm-hmm. I took the analysis on that, added an extra leg to it based on his other analysis, and it still hit. You get what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's just about the analysis. It's about the data. Like, you can't just fall in love with, like, Oh man, I lost. I won. Especially if you're doing parlays, bro. They five legs. You you understand how these games work? These are real beings playing these games, nigga. Yeah. This ain't this ain't just like a bunch of bots simulating a, a, a basketball game, nigga. These are real people playing. And maybe tonight I'm on some bullshit. I'm fouling too much. So I probably would have hit that line based on the analysis, but I'm in foul trouble all game. So now I don't get to play much. My rhythm is fucked up. And then I'm cooked. Cause I've seen that happen on nights where like a player is. Yo, he's been hitting this line all night. He, this team stinks at a specific thing. This nigga is amazing at. It's a perfect matchup for him to go crazy. And then he go crazy for a full quarter, get in foul trouble, and then fuck the whole parlay up. But it's like the analysis was there. It was solid. Your analysis worked, nigga. He was going to get it had he not got into foul trouble. So that's what I mean when I say analysis. Because if you look at that like in just terms of wins and losses, you'd be like, well, nigga, I ain't win shit. I lost. You know, but like, and I the even analysis was there, and it made sense. So you just got to keep at it. Yeah, and I even seen one he post like he posted this long sheet where he has like these like this bots like he'll do it like he'll simulate it ten times, and then like mm-hmm. the bots will pick the over or the under, uh, nine out of ten times or eight. He out said of this thing is a data analyst. Like that's his normal everyday job. So he's just yeah, yeah like that's his. his he's using his skill to populate NBA and NFL probabilities. Yeah. So that's his background, right? So it's just like he posted one, like, like, hold on, I'll, I'll send you like the, the type of thing it was. And literally, this was he didn't post a play from these sheets, but this is uh yeah, this is specifically for the game tonight, actually. So it kind of helps. But um, you see how the overcount and there's an undercount. It's like seven, five, 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 five is the ones you want to stay away from. Nigga, I made a sheet yesterday of basketball of it was only eights and up, like eight, two over or like nine one or ten zero like there was like one ten zero i put that on there there was like two nine ones i put those on there and then there was like two eight twos and i put those on there and that ticket won and he didn't have a ticket for that you get what i'm saying like he didn't make a ticket based on what the robot liked but i saw it and i was like well shit nine to one nigga the robot knows something don't he (laughs) so as you can see with the atlanta and carolina shit the robot is not very sure yeah, of course not. 
Who yeah. would be? Robots like Hayat Santana. <laughs> I mean, only me, Zacchaeus, to probably go crazy. But uh, well, if you got this system, you need to start putting up some more money. You put up a dollar twenty-five and won seventy-six dollars. Imagine you put up ten dollars and won. Yeah, well, I mean, it's also about units, right? Because I was working with a twenty-five dollar bankroll. Right, so one unit out of that bankroll will be two point five. Right, I treat the unit as like a ten percent. So that's the only reason why that number was like that because I was just staying loyal to the to the units. Now that I've got a bigger bankroll, yeah, I'll move up to fifty. So I'll double that whole play. So, and that's what it was because my problem is if you don't stay loyal to the units, you're you're gonna get into the same problem where you're gonna win a bunch of times where, and then it's gonna feel great. But then when you lose and you put too much money down because you didn't stay loyal to what you would, then it's like yeah, okay. Because then I do that. I've done that plenty of times where I just get greedy and I'm like. Nah, this really gonna hit. I'm gonna put ten dollars on it, and then it don't hit. And he's like, "Well, I should have just stayed loyal to my 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 shit." Because think about it, my bankroll is twenty five dollars. I made one hundred ninety last night. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's still a crazy profit in terms of what I'm putting in to get back, and that's what I mean. Like, so it's not like the niggas are like well, you can win a thousand dollars. Yeah, I know. I gotta work my way up to that though, bro. Like, I have enough money to start with a hundred dollar bankroll, but I don't want to see a hundred dollars leave my account like that. <laughs> not does yet. This group, um, the guy, does he? Does he also do uh fantasy teams? Because like you know, I can't gamble yet until um, it's, uh, no he is illegal. No, but um if he gives me a list of players that are gonna yes, do good, exactly. I can craft a team around that. Exactly that. Yeah, exactly that. So you can sort of look at the list of players that like I right, he thinks someone because he'll do that on Sundays, like he'll have like three or four slips for football. So you can look at the slips, see who he thinks is gonna go stupid, and then sort of craft your teams around that type of beat. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, it's, it's still utility for you. Between that and like the sheets where he actually posts like the actual what the robot likes and all, like all of that shit will be helpful. So yeah, and this sheet is this is something that the robot liked. What? The what you just posted in the chat just now. This is the robot. No, this is said. literally just the sheet. Like you can see, it says the overcount, the undercount, and then it'll ask you what is the robot like. Like the only uh, one on here that I'd feel confident in would be any of the six to twos or the seven to three. So that's like Tyler Algier rushing yards. Uh, what's that on Tyler Algier rushing and receiving yards, and then how OB. do they? How do they do this? Because look, well, they the line set at a certain number, right? And they count what's the over, how much would I get? Like what's the odds for the over? What's the odds for the under? What's the projected number? What's the mean number of like what he's been getting and so on and so forth? What's the median? And then the robot takes all this data and I guess comes up with like a you know a, a simulation that they do ten times and it's like it's all just probability. Yeah, it's all just probability, and that's the thing. Like it's never like guaranteed. But again, I took a sheet that was nine ones, eight twos, and I won off the sheet because probability. So, so why is Zacchaeus? over by seven when he hasn't done anything all season because the line is 22 yards oh okay okay okay. you see what i'm saying the line is 22 yards so they're like i'm looking at this from a different perspective i'm looking at this from a fantasy perspective who's gonna put up the most points yeah yeah yeah. this this shit wouldn't do you really too good here for that reason yeah that's okay there we go that's like, what like you're talking about, that, yeah. yeah. These this particular one wouldn't. No, no, no. But when he put when he shows the actual bet slips that he puts down, that would help. Yeah. Yeah. Look. Okay. I mean, luckily, uh, sports betting is going to be legal in Maryland soon. Like this is like, hold on, this is like an example. Uh, this is the basketball one, but like you can sort of see the same sort of thing in it, where like he'll have the whole oh so and so hit this line in these games, so and so is playing the, this team who usually don't do this. And da da da, and like so, you can sort of see how the, the 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 logic and the logistics of it work. Okay, yeah, this this makes sense. How much do you win off of this? Does he show how much he wins? Uh, yeah, he'll show what his bets are. Uh, that one from yesterday, last night, he won a uh, rack off of that. He put twenty two dollars down on twenty two and getting a rack. Yeah, because it was plus four thousand. Mine was plus six thousand because I added an extra leg to it. So if I had to put twenty two down, I would have made more than he did. It's all it's all kind of evening out between uh, like betting wise between fantasy and what y'all are doing. It's kind of even out for me because the games where I have one, like the game uh, where Alvin Kamara scored like six touchdowns and I won fourteen hundred dollars, I probably put like twenty two dollars down just on not on that one bet, but on yeah, the yeah. amount of teams that I made. Mm-hmm. And that one team that I paid like five dollars for is the one that hit. Right. So like technically, I only spent five dollars to win that, but to I you made really multiple teams. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. 
And then a couple weeks ago, when I won first place and I won that two something, I probably spent like thirty bucks for it. Yeah, it's like it's it's kind of like the same scale, y'all. Yeah, so like the odds aren't yeah, the odds aren't insane. Like yeah, I even look at what I did last night. Like I put down a total of ten dollars to win one ninety. So when you look at it like that, the odds on that is like plus nineteen hundred, which is great, mm-hmm. still great odds. But you put ten down and win one ninety, and that's what I mean when I say I don't want to go too crazy with the bankroll because that's on a night that I win. What happens mm-hmm. on a night where I put twenty dollars down and don't win nothing? My whole bankroll's cooked. So now I got to put another twenty five dollars into my account, and that's what it is. Like I've been. Literally, like, nah, that's what I'm working with. I'm working off 25s, and I think I upped the bankroll to 50. I took out the rest in profits, and I'm like, all right, it's up to 50 now. And when we get another win, if that win is high enough, then we're going to move it up to 75 or 100 or something. So that's how I've been looking at it. Like, I don't want to just put my own money in it, because it's like, at that point, like, I'm really gambling. Like, I know I'm really gambling already, but, like, it's not, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not fun like, gambling no more. It's like, I mean, I, yeah, money. like, my thing is, like, nigga, this shit can easily become a gambling addiction. That's just easily how this shit stops. So it's like, if you're not being loyal to your units and all of that shit, then you're just throwing your money around. And that's exactly how fucking gambling addictions happen. The niggas just get used to seeing that. Oh, I love that. That 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 little green, that little crown when I be winning. Yeah, it's so nice. Yeah, that's what I be trying to compound my winnings. Like, whenever... Like, there's these little... These $9 bets, they give you the most amount of money. Like, it's like a... A million dollar pot when you put in nine dollars, and winner usually gets anywhere from like a hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand. But if it's a really big game like the Super Bowl, three hundred thousand to five hundred thousand. So I'll usually put in you know those nine dollar bets on those, and I, if I hit on one of those, that's enough for the entire week. Like I'll get like fifty dollars, and then I can just put in bets for the entire week instead of having to use my own money. That's what I mean, and that's what right. I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to put no more of my own bread in. Like I feel like yeah. I got this one. I should be able to from this fifty. I'm trying to maintain to where I I don't want to put bread in for the rest of the season. Like to just be honest with you, this week I have I'm sitting on forty six right now, just from the Monday game, and so I could fund bets for today for Sunday. As long as I don't go crazy, I could fund bets for Monday next week, Thursday next week, but. I'm not putting no money on this the game this week because I I don't know what the fuck is gonna go on with yeah. fucking the Falcons yeah. and the Panthers. And the, and the funny thing is in the Discord they'll do exactly that. They'll just sit there. like sometimes they don't care what the bots say. They're just like, look, bro, I don't like the matchup. So yes, I'm only, so I'm only putting one slip out. That's yeah. it. Like whereas any other week they'll be like, nah, we got three slips. We got four slips. They're like, nah, don't like the game. It's a Thursday night game anyway. Y'all getting one. And maybe I'll give you the stats for a lotto, but I'm not even gonna put it together because I don't I don't care. <laughs> like I'm just gonna give you what the robots say and you can figure out the lotto from there. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I right, you know, I'll tell you what, we need to get up out of here, y'all. So I will holla at y'all, man. Thank y'all for being some loyal listeners. I forgot I was potting on this guy at this point. Listen, um, man, everybody listen, I need y'all to know that y'all are very important to me. Um, the reason being is because I decided to pod instead of going to see Black Panther mm-hmm. today. Crazy. I was gonna go at four o'clock. It is now five ten. Y'all welcome. Mm-hmm. Y'all welcome, man. Y'all welcome. We do this. This, this y'all who we do this shit for, man. We do this for y'all, yo. But I'm gonna need y'all niggas to get out of my house. So I'll holler, man. Take care.